Since we started Shield Up, our Patreon-exclusive podcast, people have said that listening to it feels like they're hanging out with their mates down the pub. At the end of each year, it's become a little Shield Up tradition for us to sit down and answer 100 of your questions. This year, we thought we'd head down the pub, film it, and share it with everyone as a little treat. There are now more than 200 episodes of the show available to patrons. To learn more, head over to patreon.com forward slash RKG. Cheers, boys. Cheers. To the fools. I'm going for it. We're all going for it. No way. It's fucking early doors, man. I'm going for it. It's 11 a.m., mate. You can't do 100 questions. He's showing off. (laughs) He way overshot that. Oh! Overshot. Close. That's close. It's actually close now. Ooh, I thought it was. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, that is actually pretty. That, yeah. that is better. That is better. All right. If there was one, this is for all of us. If there was one game, film, or TV show you could experience for the first time again, what would it be? Prepare to try season one. Nice. Yeah. That's your answer. Probably one of the like best it. bits of content I think that does exist yeah. uh, in the world. You've gone big refer to that. I like it. I like it. I always I always think something like seven would be really good. Something that's something like a twist. It's based on like a mystery or something. Like it would be nice to experience like your favorite TV show, like Mad Men again. I'd love that. But the Prestige. I think yeah. Prestige seven, prestige. like because I remember the first time I saw that it was just mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to show where uh, friends become enemies, enemies become friends, there's a climactic build-up with a good uh, resolution. I'd recommend Prepare to Try Season 1. Uh, or any of the stuff on our own channel that we make money from. Oh, yeah, no, yeah actually, that one, yeah. Uh, Powered. Uh, this is from someone who says, I know you're a Guinness boy, but would you ever try Beamish? Yeah, I would try Beamish. I'd love to try Beamish. I didn't even know Beamish existed until, like, six months ago. I think you say, I've got a question. What's this Beamish? Yeah. <laughs> well, you got big into it when you went down to Cork. That's yeah, like there was the lots of in Cork. one in South, Southern Ireland, right? Yeah, there was one in, in County Kerry. Um, it's an alternative Cal- to Guinness. Well, similar sort of thing. Well, in County Kerry, there's a Guinness in the um, in the airport, but if you order it, there's little like, yeah, they were like, you know there's Beamish, you can have a Beamish. And we were like, we'll get a Beamish then if you want, mate. Like, <laughs> fair play to him. I was like, oh, that's quite fun. I'd love yeah. to try it. Yeah. Tastes- I'm surprised you've not had it. No. It tastes quite it tastes quite similar, but I've only been drinking stout this year, so I'm I, maybe not the best. You know what I want to, to revisit about. that my dad used to drink when I was a kid, and I've never had it since. Is Bollington's? Because that's like a blonde Guinness. Yeah, like it's in between from Manchester as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the drink that's made of beef? <laughs> Bovril. Bovril. That's Bovril. what I'm thinking of. <laughs> I was like, your dad drank beef. But no, you're talking about people do drink, drink Bovril. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, don't knock Bovril until you've had it. It's yeah, like maybe not pints nice. of it. Yeah, you <laughs> like drinking a stock cube. What does it sound good about that? <laughs> yeah. It's basically a, like gravy. A, mug, a mug of gravy, yeah. It's like, it's like having beef soup. Yeah. Okay, like, you to answer your question, oh. I would drink beef. Also, I feel yeah. like that's something you would like. I probably would. Yeah. On a day like yeah, this, yeah, 100%. Daniel, without spoilers, are you more excited or scared about Retry Elven Ring? I'm more excited now that I have a plan for it mm. and a slight degree of mastery. Did a, I'm going to go through a plan with you like, this week of what Retry Elden Ring could be and everything it should be. And I think it's actually, while a challenge, because it's going to be the biggest thing we've ever made, Yeah, it actually has the potential to be the best thing we've ever made because of that, because the game could give us that. So I'm actually excited. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Are you going to have to use like codes to describe things? Oh yeah. So it'll be like, we're going to go into Flame Town. Uh, we'll we'll ask how far. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the spreadsheet and... Uh, there's a couple of things that I didn't know. I don't think it's spoiled anything, but there's a couple of like big Welsh bits. And I was like, that's Welsh, that's Welsh, that's Welsh. Oh yeah, so there, that, there's yeah. a word that looks really Welsh. And mm. I looked it up and I can never find a meaning for it, but it just uses similar lettering to it. Yeah, like, well, that like happens Welsh. a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, that, just like, I guess, imply a sort of... That happens a lot in Witcher. F- spice to it. Whereas like, they'll have some elements of Welsh a to C-A-E. it. Like, like Geralt, right, yeah. like Geralt would be Geralt. Yeah. Um, but like, that's in it. But they've sort of gone, well, we'll take some and then it's like we'll a flavor, isn't that. it? Yeah. yeah. It's not like, a talking, isn't it? It's yeah. like borrowing certain elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the Welsh bit of it, but also lots more of it as well. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you said, like, one of the years, Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a question that says if you could make Lego, uh, if you could make Lego start producing sets for a new franchise, what would you choose? 
Like, they do quite a good job, although I, I think it's quite boring. You know when they do, like, the office office? Yeah, yeah. Like, we're like, well, it's still just an office, isn't it? Like, I think, it, I think it's more, I, I definitely would like, I know they've done some Simpsons thing, but I think, like, a Moe's Tavern, I think yeah. would be really good. Because you just have, yeah. That's why they won't do it. Oh yeah, it's annoying because like the office is not aimed at kids. No, Friends is definitely not aimed at kids no. anymore. Yeah, I know some kids do, which but like mm. they don't do anything like adult. Yeah, that's why they won't do horror sets. Right, because like okay, a perfect yeah. one. Like imagine if they did Overlook Hotel. Yeah, perfect set to build. Is they don't do anything that's not like possibly kid friendly. Right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Because most yeah. be perfect. Yeah, that was. They've done all the other big ones. And there's there's so many like little in jokes and stuff you could do because that was the coolest thing when we built Quickie Mart was all the cool little, little in jokes and you're like fucking hell man. This they've gone deep for this. To be fair, um, I don't know if they've done too much of it, but even some video game stuff like Dark Souls Lego would be so cool. Yeah. Especially cuz spe- like a lot of the maps in Dark Souls 1 are the ones that like loop in on each other. Yeah. You could have like oh, sets to put them together. Yeah. Imagine how cool that would be. You've done all the Mario stuff recently. You've and the like... Sonic stuff is fucking Well, that's all bo- it's bonkers. <laughs> it's like those like, it's like the worst Lego sets which are just like these flimsy 2D which are kind of like a 2D platformer, mm. but the Mario stuff at least it's like here's a Bowser. Yeah, and he's just a Bowser. But maybe I don't. Like, yeah, I don't mind that. But it's more it's like you like, made a figure. Oh, those, I see. Like, yeah. The adverts where it was like, and then you can get Mario and you can do this. Can you? Well, I won't be doing that. So <laughs> I don't need it to be produced like that. Thank you. But the side scrolly <laughs> one, where it's like on a little. Oh, treadmill. that's different. That's like the NES one. You, oh, is that there's these other ones where you get like a little digital Mario yeah. and stuff. And he like, his face changes and shit. And you can, like, it's not for us. No, it's not for us. Okay, okay. It sounds pretty cool. I'm kind of into that. I saw someone recently who was like older than us and doesn't have children, and that's absolutely fine. But they were like building the Sonic the Hedgehog one, and I was like, go outside, you fucking <laughs> <laughs> little dweeb. Um, Daniel. I never know what you're gonna be okay with and what you're gonna think it's too far. Oh no, I think that, that is a play Sonic. set. That's a play set. It's basically Playmobil, like I, I, making Mario move across the little level. No, I'm not doing that. That's, <laughs> that's madness, that is. I can I'm, read a I'm book. I'm gonna those sets. <laughs> Daniel, beyond Elden Ring, what setting would you like to see for From's next game? Oh, uh, honestly, I'd like them to do. I mean, the majority of their games have been high fantasy mm. or dark fantasy, which isn't the kind of speculative fiction that I like the most. So I either do like sci fi, which they've mm. never done, or do another straight up horror game again. Yeah. All, their, all their games have an element of horror, but Bloodborne is the only one that's like out and out horror, yeah, yeah, yeah. gothic and cosmic. I know some so do something who... else in that, like more leaning yeah. into that. Field of I know some people who are into horror game who are not into horror and didn't play Dark Souls because they were like, oh, I don't like scary games. It, 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 there's definitely horror games and yeah. aspects and all this stuff. Like even Sekiro, some of those oh, yeah, creatures absolutely. are really scary. Like, um, I think that's the thing. Like sci-fi, but I think even if it's sci-fi, I'd want it to be like horror infused. Yeah, because there's always rumors that they would do like the Armor Core start. Right, they've got like yeah, a background yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. doing like. Yeah. Mech sci-fi, but the yeah. mechs don't do anything for me. No, not nor for me. I don't. I didn't. I don't mind it, but it's got to be. It's got to be a reason for it. I'm not just. I'm not spending like. But I think it's sixteen hours just blasting shit. That's the thing. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm back. That's in. the thing. <laughs> if, if he makes that game, I'm sure I would be interested in it because yeah. it's not going to be that. Well, Bloodborne already had kind of like the alien themes, but like included in yeah. the very like yeah. Miyazaki way. Yeah. So even if they did a bit of sci-fi, it would probably be, be a, like ancient be lore. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think just another straight up horror game, like I've been to that. The thing is, I don't kind of mind, you know, like I w- like Death Stranding, you know, like that as a sci-fi yeah. thing. Like I love that setting, like it looks like post-apocalyptic. I, so, I mean, sci-fi is a very diverse church, isn't it? Yeah. You're joking me. What is that? Drilling metal outside. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's oh fun, we're just gonna it? have to go for it. Should I ask him just how, what the deal is? I don't mind. I'll take the pint out. Hey, mate, what are you fucking doing? Hello, fella. How are you doing, mate? Uh, yeah, do you know how long you'll be making noise and stuff? Oof, I'll go, I don't know. An hour, I suppose. And it'll just be that noise constantly, or? It's just, yeah, I'm just drilling out. Okay, yeah. Holes. For the pub, yeah. For the pub, yeah. Did they know you were coming? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not great for us. How long are you filming for? Two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah. All right, well, let me see. I might end you quick. I might only be. Just, I'll see how quick they go. But will you be around by your and stuff, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of there. Where are you filming now? Yeah, literally inside. Yeah. Right, I'll start. I'll do these three first because then I'm up there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, mate.
That's just like, you're like when two people are talking, and you're not getting oh none of God. you are getting the answers that you want. Basically, yeah. I think you should make it part of it. Yeah, it's too. fine. Yeah, yeah. That's such a good conversation because it's just like I was asking him questions, he was asking me questions. Neither of us were getting the answers that we wanted. <laughs> well, I was just like, why are you asking me questions? Yeah, yeah. 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 I've questions. got hundred to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't need the any next more six questions. are from the guy outside. Hey, oh, what are we doing, uh, Rory? What is your ultimate no restrictions dream Halloween cosplay? <laughs> Ooh, lots of words in that. Yeah, that, I thought it was going to be your ultimate fancy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of did my uh, my ultimate Halloween costume slash cosplay this year, which was finally dressing up as Naruto, mm. but with a group of friends where we all went as like different every, Naruto every characters. Every 32-year-old man's dream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dressing up as a child's well, 31, cartoon. 31, guys, so, uh, you know, still young. Uh, yeah. How did it go down in Korea? It, went down, Korea, it? Yeah. it went down incredibly The photo was well. amazing, really? to be fair. We, yeah. were, we were stopped pretty much every two minutes by someone who wanted to take photos together. Love it. Because over there, like Halloween costumes are still a bit of a novelty. Like it's not as big as it is over here. Yeah. So a lot of people were just like Naruto, Naruto, Naruto. You were like, like a Naruto group as well, right? Yeah. So you were yeah, posing yeah, yeah. and like. Oh, we all had like our cool little signs we were doing, yeah. and yeah, people were loving it. It was great. Uh, were you like the ringleader in? You were like, Lance, uh, can I need a little bit more from you on the on the sign? Like, yeah. Col- Colin, mate, come on. What, 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 what are we doing? I was like, <laughs> you're Itachi. Act like Itachi. I don't believe for a second you're a rogue ninja. Come on. Who were the other two? Like, what? Well, I don't know anything about the reason. Uh, it was um, uh, one member. Colin went as Itachi, member of the yeah. Akatsuki, mm. uh, brother to Sasuke Uchiha. Of course, you guys know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, love, like, love and then uh, another one went as. Uh, Jonin, which is a high-ranked ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village. Um, your, your basic standard Were stuff. you Naruto? Yeah. Were I you was Naruto. A Naruto or like the Naruto? The Naruto. Johnny Naruto. Did Johnny you like... Man. Did you come up with the idea of the costumes? Because you like bagsy Naruto. No, I actually didn't. Oh, I, guess, I, guess, I, guess I guess I could be Naruto. Like, <laughs> is that, so it's just like... Pretty, is that like being Tommy Pickles if we were Rugrats? No, nah, N- Naruto what? isn't even the best character in Naruto. He's what? just the oh. least character. Everyone oh, loves other characters. Tommy Pickles the best character? Ah, uh, Chucky, man. Chucky is yeah. the Reptar. best one. Chucky at Reptar. <laughs> Angelica is probably the best one, but maybe the one we could do the basically not Phil and Lil. We couldn't do a good one off. Yeah. The the um, Rugrats movie borderline scarred me for life. I can't watch it. What happens in that? Uh, the one where they get lost in the woods. I think because if you're an older brother, that movie is super sad because mm. it's like the relationship between uh, Tommy and his like little brother. And he's like at one point really mean to his little brother in the oh, woods shit. and like leaves him. And it's so sad. And it breaks my heart. So I can't watch it. Oh. Anytime I watch it, I just call my brother and I'm like, I love you. I watch it. Are, you watching, are you watching Rugrats again? <laughs> I was like, I love you're 31. you. You're <laughs> 31. I'd never take your Reptar toys, man. You gotta know that. You can be Naruto if you want. <clears throat> this is a fantastic one. It says, I moved from the UK to the USA 16 years ago, and I have to say that American candy, read chocolate bars, is minging. I dream of British candy. What are your favorite British chocolate bars? Ooh. One each. One each. American chocolate is bad. I yeah. wouldn't say American can American candy is mm. high tier, but chocolate, I do agree. Actually, it is not. I don't great. know though, because I feel like they've got they they've absolutely what well, they've actually smashed is peanut butter. Like I think they do America. That, yeah, I think they do peanut butter stuff like Reese's. I think they do that better than the UK. Yeah, like, and excess in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I if I had to pick one. Because I always, I always I, used to think this because it had a lot of ingredients and it was quite big. Yeah. So like, if I if I had to like pick one chocolate bar, my my parents were like, "You're allowed to have one." I used to go for a picnic. I knew you, I thought you were gonna say picnic. Lo- Why do you it, pick it based on oh, ingredients? Oh, for, there's lots of going on there. Like, <laughs> having a picnic, mate. Got, it's got, a picnic. You got like a little wafery thing. You got nuts. some. You got some nuts in there. You got some uh, <laughs> raisins oils. in there. There's shit loads going on. You make it sound like you're picking like a wartime ration. And well, you're yeah, like, I, I need the one with the most things. No, but it's right though. <laughs> like when you were a kid, like it's you, like a tracker bar, you, you didn't know the next time you were getting chocolates. Like we didn't get chocolate a lot. So it was like every time the parents were like, okay, you're allowed one chocolate bar. We're like, oh. Fuck, I better make this one count. Yeah. Could be my last one for months. It's different, like, in my head, is like, is this the treat one or is it like just your go to classic? Mm. Like, you know, all faithful, reliable. It's never yeah. gonna let you down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like a boost bar. Thank boost, you. Boost I'm good. so glad someone boost said good. a boost bar. I think boost bar. is indulgent. Yeah. Well, boost bar is doing, put in like, didn't they put like, Garana. Taurine in it. Yeah. <laughs> Something like Garana. that. Boost bars are wild. <laughs> yeah. Every time. Have well, you ever boost noticed? It's the concept. It's like a battery. Have you ever noticed like anytime you eat one, it tastes cold? Somehow the insides are cold? That'd be the guava. 
<laughs> that might be the, be the problem. You, you want it to like room temperature because that middle bit is like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it goes. No, it's we're no talking way. basic standard, just a cho a bar of chocolate. Yeah. I'm going galaxy. galaxy. I'm going galaxy yeah, every time. That's a very different tasting chocolate. Oh, Melts man, in your mouth, so creamy, creamy, delicious. Love it. Absolutely love it. Galaxy. Oh, good question. Good answers, boys. Good answers. Powers. Rewatching Dark Souls three, and something came up in the first episode. I was like, what? What was the whole deal with you almost getting deported? That's crazy, right? That's the <laughs> loudest anything's ever been before. He just said he's doing Bayeux and then he's going. So okay. I, I think it'd be all right. <laughs> also, it might not sound that bad on the thing as well. So that sounds like you were saying to the question, that's, that's crazy. A, yeah. Oh, right, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We're under a gun, because this is a real pub that has to open. Yeah, so, okay, shit, all right, sorry. I will have a word on later and be like, I don't know why you organized drilling on the day that you knew there was definitely going to be Can we get some money back? We will get some money back from that, it's fine. I already talked them down. <laughs> I know we're in here, but like, cause I, I, I mean, I always think that like, you've got to ask. You've got to ask. Like when someone gives you a, a number, you go, okay, well, I'm taking 200 quid. I say that. half. Like, well, I go 200 quid down. Half. Like, we, half live, we live very different it. lives, you um, and I. Do you know well, economic theory? The person that always wins negotiation is the person that's willing to walk away. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. We are, because we love this yeah, pub. We, but also at the same time, there's fucking <laughs> millions of pubs in London. Anyway, uh, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was the deal you get almost getting deported, my friend? That was the question? That was the question, yes. yeah. Oh, Jesus so it Christ. Says, uh, what was the whole, I think we talked about in Dark Souls 3. Legal yeah, it's a legal question as well. So, so we had to, we had to, uh, did we have to take like a hey, it's in Dark Souls yeah, 3? Yeah, I got fired. <laughs> you did, they you they did, had to didn't, legally fire didn't me for right my job. Work, did you? Yeah. It was insane. Basically, when I first came to the UK, I got something uh, that at the time was called indefinite stay. From yeah. the planet Zoltar. <laughs> yeah, from my home planet. <laughs> Which basically means in your passport you have when you first enter the country you get a big stamp yeah. that says you can stay here for as long as you Because you weren't want. a British citizen. No, no, I was only like four years old, so my family. Well, you could have become one in the time since, but just yeah, you have it. to go through a bunch of shit. I had the stamp; just I thought it is. was fine. Yeah, but he had to pay a lot of money, do an exam, go to a big ceremony. He did it properly, is what you said. He did the real deal. I'm not doing any of that nerd shit. <laughs> yeah, I got the stamp. I got the stamp. I thought everything was fine. Also, you thought you were getting a job in San Francisco. That's, well, that's a whole nother story, we <laughs> yeah. won't go into that. Um, but basically, I had this stamp for the longest time. So anytime I left the UK and came back, I basically had two passports that I used to show border control, which was my current passport and a picture of me as a, a baby. baby yeah. Like literally a baby head in this, in this passport with that's just ridiculous. a stamp next to it. Absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Insane, but it worked for the longest time. And yeah. I didn't realize obviously they'd been updating the rules and regulations and how that worked until eventually when it was time for me to be hired as a full-time employee at IGN, they were like, cool, we're just gonna need your uh, residence permit so we can know that you're legally allowed to work in the UK. Yeah. And I was like, no worries, that's me as a baby. Uh, and there's the big stamp next to it. Uh, you joke. And they were like, that is, what do you, no. you don't have a residence permit. Yeah. Um, so I had that's to. That's me as a baby. Yeah. <laughs> in cool, EQ, thanks, but it's not what we asked for. Give me, give me the money. your son. <laughs> but it meant that basically I wasn't even legally allowed to work at IGN. Yeah. They shouldn't have been yeah. paying me until I had this paperwork and this certificate. So they had to fire me. I had to pay to go like get this expedited process done, which cost, which cost me all the money I had saved over two years of working the job Jesus. in the first place. So I was like, all right, this is just one of those, got to bite the bullet and get it done. Yeah. Uh, managed to pass luckily. So I think I was fired for like, what was it, two weeks or something? Hmm. Do we not give you freelance work though? No. Mm, I thought we did. And. And the fucked up thing was, I also uh, lost all the holiday time that I was saving because I got rehired. Holiday, yeah. It was it was one of the worst. Uh, that might have been one of the last times I just cried. Yeah. It was so stressful. It was really brutal. That was a stress. It was it was pretty bad. But I got my residence permit. I no longer have to show people my baby pictures. But that was funny. You know, you know what else yeah. was stressful? And then we'll leave this hanging for next year's question. Is where you couldn't do a stream with me because of glass. <laughs> oh, we, we've definitely told that story. Oh, wait, Why do these things happen story. to me? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Oh, I can tell you. <laughs> the, the, the funniest way to describe how tragic that brief two week window was, was I remember I was so broke that I, uh, during this, I came into the IGN office because you guys were having a party. Yeah. I came in, even though I didn't work there, to just eat the pizza oh, at the yeah, party yeah, so yeah. I didn't have to buy dinner. Yeah. I remember when I was people like, looked at you, you scuttled behind the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Go, it's in. No way. It's the illegal. <laughs> Daniel. 
Do you have a favorite lesser known horror film? Mine is Cairo, uh, a Japanese film that for some reason never gets brought up alongside classics like The Grudge or The Ring. Have you seen Cairo? It's Pulse, it's known as over here. No, I, I know, the, I know the title Pulse. Yeah. Uh, it's called, we call, uh, <laughs> just because of the time of year uh, we're filming that, is Better Watch Out. I've told uh, you about yeah, this film. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good what is that? Um, Christmas horror film. And I, I know no one who's seen it. It's called Better Watch Out, and I literally can't say much about it because it kind of really ruins it. But it's mm. a little bit like a home invasion movie, so it's a bit like Home Alone. Yeah. It's called Better Watch Out. Great title for a Christmas horror movie. Great. Mm. I'm just going to say that off the top of my head. Um, I, I, I literally just put it on my list of things. Yeah, because I've said, I yeah. said it. And I'm, I'm done I really it. hope, because I've not seen that for four years. Maybe it's rubbish. But like, I remember watching that going, I thought it was really fun. Mm. I knew nothing about it. No one talks about it. Who's intruding? Santa? I'm not going to say. Okay. It's Santa. <laughs> I mean, it's Santa. Santa. No, Santa doesn't exist. Is that a Santa or him? Well, the way he's answered that. So. Yeah. I'm not liberty to say. <laughs> For me, then, uh, advice to someone who had scarring from a tattoo um, is worried but wants to get another. Um, I've had that happen to me once. Um, and that was because I was moving at the same time. So I was like moving al- around a lot. So that can happen. Dust you're... got in it and stuff oh, like that. So which one it, is it? Uh, it's fine now because I've had it re- like touched up. Ah. But it's my Welsh one. Um, but I had that for a while and then... It, it, it healed really badly, scarred really badly. But if you speak to your tattoo artist, like they will usually do like a free touch up and stuff and get it back. But like, don't worry about it. But also, try not to move house How at the same time. How long do you have to have it <laughs> stable for before uh, it's good? I mean, it's, everyone's different. Really? Depends okay. on it. Depends healing, on how long you heal. Factor. Yeah, healing factor. Yeah, it's your healing factor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Daniel, following England's exit from the World Cup, should Gareth Southgate stay as manager going into Euro 2024? Uh, if he'd like to. I mean, <laughs> Not he's, against his he's own, own decisions. Um, yeah, I, I feel like he's won more knockout games than any other England manager ever. Yeah. So, it's pretty good. If he wants to stay, yeah, I think he's got a connection with the players. But also, if he thinks it's time someone else takes over, yeah. then go for it. I th- but also, like... All the people thinking Southgate is like, I don't know who else you think we're gonna get. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. like, the, I, like, top elite managers don't want to manage international teams no. because if you're an elite manager, you want to be working like every day with your players. Yeah, it's like a weird part-time job. It's a very unique proposition. So it's not like we're gonna, well, Southgate leaves, we're gonna get Pep Guardiola. Yeah, not gonna happen. And I like who you get isn't always better. Yeah, absolutely. I think like that's the thing with thick football fans. They have two gears essentially, which is players in, manager out. But what you don't think about when that manager out is he is under contract for a certain amount of time. So they would have to buy his contract out and you get a certain amount of money from going into a football tournament. He would, like, you would have made a lot of money from getting as far as you did. Well, We're going to spend all that on fucking paying off him and his backroom staff One of the best now. jobs to have in the world would be a crap football manager. Yeah. Because you, you sign a lucrative contract and then you get sacked. <laughs> you don't have to do any of the years of work and you get all the money. Yeah. That doesn't happen with any other fucking job, does it? Yeah. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, that would be good, actually. Very Although, sure. yeah, it'd be a good one would be good as well. Like, oh, it'd, be, it'd, be oh fair. Yes. it'd also be fun to be like the manager of a winning team. Yeah, oh, yeah imagine yeah, that. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. probably get more money. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Uh, I don't know why they've phrased it like this, Powers, but I'm assuming you know them or they're just being weird. Um, hey, Raw Bear, uh, can you chat more about <laughs> why? Never been called that in my life. Oh, yeah. Never been oh, called yeah. that in my life. And I love nicknames. Raw Bear? Can you chat more about why uh, you were more veg food for a bit? What made you make oh, the yeah. change, personal or external reasons? Oh, veggie food? Yeah, you talk about veggie chicken nuggets a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, I used to be uh, I used to be a big meathead, probably in a douchebag capacity uh, when I was younger, just thinking it was, you know, just like, I love meat, love steak, and I still do. Yeah. But uh, a big change for me was when a few years ago, I started living with uh, my friend Kit and his now wife, Danny, who are both diehard vegans. And uh, me and my brother were living with them for two years. Mm. And just their kind of diet and their food just started to like bleed into our lives. They'd start cooking something and I'd be like, that smells really good. Mm. There's colors. Uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, what, what animal is that? They're like, a it's pepper. a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so eventually then I just started, um, I think me and my brother for a while, we were like, why don't we just eat vegetarian for like six months mm. and just give it a shot? You know, if you're into like the gym, that's the only challenge is getting your protein if you're just eating kind of plant-based. But especially in London, there's so many amazing uh, vegan and vegetarian restaurants. Yeah. Um, the One of my favorite companies that make stuff is Corn. 
which I've talked about on this podcast before, but people thought I was talking about corn, the vegetable. Mm. Corn. 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 It, with a Q. Q. It's kind of like a fungus, isn't it? Yeah. It's they, a semi-fungus. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. He's the one. <laughs> it's grown in vats. Like, it's like, yeah, it's I, was gonna say, I thought it was some kind of cow. I know you like mushrooms. When was the last time you ate a bit of a mushroom? I fucking hate mushrooms. Yeah, I know, but when was the last time you actually had some mushrooms? Like last week. That's not far off what corn, corn is. What, yeah. what, one, yeah. of my, one of my favorite, <laughs> you might be honest on here. One of my, fa- <laughs> one of my favorite uh, dishes is this like, uh, this fake meat uh, spaghetti bolognese. Right. And then I was like, what even is this stuff? And I was like, it's mushrooms. And I was like, yeah. yeah. We, yeah mushrooms are a great source of umami, which which mm. is what you get when you like caramelize, cam- caramelize meat and mm. stuff. Really? Yeah. I think it's, it's just plain. Like, I'm sure you can do a lot of cool things to mushrooms, and I will yeah. like them. Yeah. But I think standard mushrooms. That's what like when you grow up, it's like when you start, you realize you think you don't like stuff, then you realize you've just had it cooked badly. badly. Yeah. As yeah. In, like you mushrooms cooked badly yeah. and very slimy, which yeah. puts people off. Yeah. Absolutely. You can do so much stuff with mushrooms. Also, like they can just be an ingredient in things, which you literally have in love. Yeah. But I, I, I'd encourage anyone who's you know even wants to try it to like maybe start one day a week or something. There's so many amazing uh, vegetarian products. I mean, you can even get like vegetarian chicken nuggets if you still want to eat like junk food, but it's delicious, yeah. you know? So yeah, give it a shot. <clears throat> Hello boys. Just want to say, I uh, hope you all have a great Christmas and New Year's. Uh, you've absolutely killed it this year. Um, so your Resident Evil series uh, ranging from Back with the Bakers or the mainline games are some of my favorites. What Resident Evil game would you each like to tackle next? Are there still plenty of them left? I think like ones that aren't in that main canon that people love, like Zero, Code Veronica. Mm. What the fuck happens in Code Veronica? Revelations. I don't, I don't Revelations. I, I, oh, Revelations I, I, are really. Do you remember good. Revelations? <laughs> What's that? Uh, they mis they misspelled the name of the game on the spine oh, that they no. printed. They printed it Revelations. Revelations. Leon like, Kennedy investigates. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Revelations the first Leon one. Leon Five Kennedy. <laughs> like when I worked on O and M, we had to be excited about every 3DS game. When that came out on 3DS, it was like. Okay, this is exciting because it was genuinely good. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I had on PS4 now. Like they, yeah, they yeah, ported yeah. It to... I had Umbrella Chronicles on the Wii. Is that the light gun one? Yeah, it was yeah. like I thought I bought basically my own arcade light, game. Yeah, yeah, super weird. I never played that one. Uh, I, honestly, I think because no one I know has ever played it, mm. and I was at IG when it came out. Um, six, six, yeah. Because it's like I think that went. To, I mean, that's why they had to do seven. They went so far <laughs> down the route of like action horror game. They had to go, we need to rein this in for seven. Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah. that's like three different characters. We could almost play a campaign each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make like, oh, yeah. like kind of like lean into the excess of the game and emulate that and just yeah. make it a really like wild resi that would play be through. Fun. I know nothing about that. I no, I, all, I think yeah. the three characters, I think one is Leon. Yeah. Leon. There you uh, go. Ada Wong. Yes. And, and I'd yeah. be like that mercenary dude with the mask on. What's he called? Like tofu, chunk, hunk, <laughs> hunk. Yeah, yeah. Tofu. Yeah. <laughs> tofu and hunk. Those are the two like secret yeah. characters you could. Uh, really? Like, uh, yeah. I had One no of those idea. a big thing of tofu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have seen yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. This guy looks like tofu. It's a big yeah. block of tofu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which you should know about because you're a vegetarian. Yeah. Now, so. <laughs> uh, Roll bear yeah. loves tofu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Powers, if you had to choose one cryptid to exist in our world, which would it be? Ooh. Well, they, all t- they all exist, right? Anyway, so, uh, be a question. I mean, yeah. talking about vegetarianism, uh, the vegetable man, it'd be great if he existed. <laughs> He's a man made out of vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> Where does he appear? Broken fields, mostly. This what, is, like, is it a real thing people have seen? It's a real cryptid, yeah, the vegetable man. Uh, people think he has, like, like, uh, Carrots. Viney fingers that Carrots. Like wrap that, around that, you. That Italian painter who makes faces out of vegetables. You've seen it? <laughs> yeah. Like the Renaissance painter, like Grimaldi mm. or something? Like he's just like little mushroom through a nose. And... <laughs> Did they see a snowman? <laughs> yeah, with a carrot nose. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That's is that? a vegetable man. <laughs> uh, one crypto I'd like to exist. Go uh, for cl- classic, right? Big one of the biggies. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, uh, maybe, maybe the Banshee. That'd be a cool one. Okay, yeah. A bit of Irish folklore in there. You know, they're not necessarily evil. They just warn you about impending death. So that's that would be quite that's a cool nice. one to exist like in the real world. Yeah. Useful. Yeah, exactly. Early not warning system. Sounds like a laugh. They're quite scary, I'll yeah. be honest. But, you know, that's fine. I'm into that. I get used to it. Yeah, right, Banshee. That's good. Daniel, have you seen Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities? And what are your thoughts on horror anthologies in general? I have seen it. I thought it was very good. Mm. I enjoyed it. I thought it 
It was nice to see. Hor- you know that horror is always made on like a shoestring budget. Usually, yeah. you don't often see that like, horror that has like a bit of spend behind it. Yeah. So you can never get good tentacles. Yeah. In a film, good I tentacles f- in. I feel like any time like a, a horror film tra- like tr- like crosses over into like mainstream, they always bang on about how cheap it was to make yeah. and how much money it's made. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> always been the proposition. Like for many many years, Halloween yeah. was the highest grossing film of all time, yeah. and wow. still like is the genre where you get to take risks yeah. because they know there's a big lucrative reward. Like even this year, like Smile made a f- ton of money. Yeah, like Jeez, these yeah. films just like make so much money for like the investment. <clears throat> Where, um, anthologies, yeah, mm. like some of my favorite horror films are like those Amicus Portmanteau films, or like Tales from the Crypt, or um, Torture Garden, which now means something else for a lot of people. Yeah, but um, it's quite cool because you get all these little like short films, and if one of them is a bit rubbish, mm. like the next one might be good. They're quite a fun thing to watch, I think. Yeah, I think like the modern ones, like those VHS, were really good. Like, well, they can really make I haven't even people. watched yeah. the new one, the nineties no. one, which is apparently really good. I've seen number one and number two. I think number two's got a really good Gareth Evans one. You can attract good people because you like it's not make a whole film. Yeah, it's basically can you make you masking them like for a few week commitment. Yeah, yeah. and. You, I think it's also a really good way of launching like new talent. Yeah. So we talked about this like when we did the Halloween podcast. What they should do with Halloween if we retire Michael Myers for a bit. Because originally this was the plan with the name Halloween because Halloween's a perfect name for a horror film to yeah. release annually. Just make it into an anthology. So every year you give someone the title Halloween, make whatever kind of film you want. That would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. That would, that's such a good idea. It would be way more interesting. Like yeah. have crazy creative styles yeah. coming in. Take the risk movies. on people. Exactly, yeah. Love it. Um, this is for me, outside of Wales, can you rank Ireland, Scotland, I- Italy, France, um, and England? Well, what, just, just as, con- as the concept? Yeah, as which ones? I'm trying to think of like which ones. I mean, I mean so like, those are all the Six Nations countries, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't think by who I would like to play. Who would like to play? Very different. But just, just as I think as a laugh in places that I've been to, I would go Ireland top because oh, yeah. I have had the most laugh there. That's and North think, and South. And North and South as a concept. There. That yeah. is Ireland as a concept. You've never been up north though, have you? Uh, yeah, I went to a place for a wedding once, but in Belfast, just around Belfast for a wedding. And is I, that good enough? That was good. Enniskillen, I think. Yeah. Enniskillen. I went to for a wedding. Like, that was cool. That's far out of Belfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had to fly into Belfast. That's the only reason. Wait, you got to go yeah. up to the North Coast. Uh, <laughs> Ireland. You want to go to the North Coast, you come to me. I would go oh, sorry, Ireland. That's how much of a laugh. Like, it's <laughs> <you're laughs> like you yeah. the time. What was it, like, Giant's Causeway? Do you like rocks? Yeah, I love rocks. you got some weird rocks. Love rocks. <laughs> I've already put it top. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. You can stay at my Atlantic. place. Atlantic. Yeah. My mum makes good soup. I, I think like this, but Ireland I'm putting top because I've seen lots of it. But I also, there's so much that I still have left to see, okay. which I think I would put on top. Um, then I would go France, uh, because I just think they're a laugh, and I've been to a lot of good gigs in France, and French people at gigs always properly go off, and I quite like that. Love it. Uh, Italy, then, because I've had my favorite some of my favorite holidays in Italy, and some of my favorite food I've ever eaten, and red wine. Um, I've ever drank. Then I'm going to put England because I live here and I've decided uh, to, you know, I've lived here for 15 years and there's lots of good stuff in England that I still haven't seen. But I think like, I don't know, I've fallen in love with London in a big, big, big way. So I'll put that there. Coco's um, here. And Coco's here. Yeah. Uh, and then Scotland up Alaska's fuck that, man. Um, there you go. Uh, Daniel. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your top three? Uh, Scottish, people, Scottish people get too much of an easy ride, man. Let me tell you. Uh, they're the real enemies. Uh, top, top three Stephen King uh, horror no- novels. Novels? Yeah. So the novels. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Shining Salem's Lot, It. Boom. Whoa. Love it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, there's something to be said for the quick answers. Yeah. I, I we got, need them, need mate. <laughs> when I was a kid, I got into reading Stephen King for a bit, but I was too young. And then I remember like... It's just so much naughty stuff. Yeah. I, I told you about this one. Day, you laughed your head off. It's like, I got my dad's copy of Needful Things. There's a whole chapter about a little kid rubbing his dick on his teacher. Yeah. I'm like, what is my dad reading on holiday? <laughs> but it's like, you know, because I think I was 15, I think, when I was on He's holidays. Naughty, man. And I was trying to read It, because yeah. I loved the TV show. And the TV show obviously has some stuff in it that you know when you watch as a kid. But then you're reading It, and then stuff starts happening. I remember even as a 15-year-old, 15-year-old going, 
It's just, I, I need oh. to come out of this. This is too old for I, me. I read right. Sam's lot again last Christmas. It's so brilliantly readable. Right, okay. Like, I think like, the same about uh, why he's the most successful novelist <laughs> living today. He's like, so brilliantly read. I think Grot is in it. It's actually nothing mucky okay, in Sam's lot. That's good. They don't right. have like, um, uh, age limits for books, do they? No, really? Read whatever you want, mate. I wrote yeah, really I wrote, I wrote yeah. Lady Charlie Lover when I was 12. <laughs> yeah. Because I knew it was naughty, and I was like, <laughs> he's saying cunt all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Powers, what Soulsborne boss do you think you could fight in real life, or at least for a bit? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, what do you reckon you could do? Say a fight is twelve rounds. What do you reckon you could go four rounds with? Does if I fight Rom, does that include the, all the spiders? Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, yeah. You got to fight the spiders. But that's spiders, not. Yeah. That's not the boss. That's spiders. Well, that's, that's the boss. Or you, you're fall. talking about like what sucker punching him in the streets? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, sneaking up behind. Because just a big worm, basically. Which of Hemwick? Uh, well, we fought like a sludge puddle, didn't we? Quite in Demon Souls, mm. uh, the goo, the slug man, the goo man. Oh, the leech monger. The leech monger, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I could take him. Although I don't want to like throw a punch and then my fist just or goes into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very similar bosses. Yeah, let's say that you're doing it fists as well. Okay. Fist, fist only run. Pop yeah. Ju- Pop Finchy run. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a hard one. Who's just a man? Gwyn's just a man. Yeah, but he's not. Yeah, but he's, he's, God. Man. <laughs> he's, he's, he's essentially yeah. God. He took me quite he a while. He fell in the dark What does going around with him mean? Can I Father hide Gascoigne? behind him? Oh, four rounds. Okay. No, you've got to fight him. You've got to fight like one on one. Father Gascoigne. Okay. Father Gascoigne. Actually, what is the easiest boss we've ever fought? That's surely that. Right? Well, no, but no, I think that's bosses. different though because yeah. you wanna, like, he's fighting him as a human with uh, no weapons. armor or weapons or anything. I think uh, Witch of Henwick, knock her out. Which one was she? She's a little witch in Bloodborne that steals your eyes with a little melon scooper. Yeah, I'll take her. Yeah, batter her. My eyes say shit anyway, so. You're happy about being out there, yeah? Yeah, I'll punch a I'll witch. <laughs> Why is that controversial? I'll punch a witch. She's stealing eyes. Uh, Dan Hume uh, included his name for this one and said, all right, lads, hope you're keeping well. When will you be brave enough to tackle Sakura's uh, gauntlet mode? Keep up the amazing content. We'd love to watch you if you struggle through a behemoth of a boss rush. Cheers. Do it for a live stream. Yeah, I think live stream would be really Hell fun. yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm dying to it's go back into Sekiro. It's a lot of pressure for you, mate. It's a lot of pressure. I think you'd have to definitely say it. that you were going to have a go of the game before we started the you live need a stream. Warm-up. You need to get back in the yeah. sink. Yeah, I definitely need to relearn that combat. Would you? But now <laughs> I still after, don't know if you know what that combat is. After Halloween, I have my very own Naruto costume. So don't worry, guys. We're covered on the outfit. Is that appropriate? Mm, that's appropriate. Yeah, that's He's a ninja. He's a ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village. He's yeah, an like, It's fine, it's... actually. I yeah. bought the headband. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. I got you guys some as well. Yeah, have have you? you can do Hidden Rain and you can yeah. be hidden in the sand. Yeah, I might not so. do that, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, I would I would just definitely do that. I think as, as a live stream, I think I'm pretty good. Any other villages? The village hidden in the rain, the village hidden in the mist, the, vil- oh. the hidden leaf village. Those are the, all the villages. The... All I'll the brief day. you guys before. Okay. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna like understand. I'm gonna read up loads on Naruto once, just so I can answer you one day, and you'll be like, what? <laughs> uh, Powers, what are some of your musical influences? Um, that's a great question. I have a lot of musical influences. Um, ranging from a lot of different genres. If we're talking uh, electronic music, I really like Porter Robinson. Mm. I really like uh, Madion. I've been getting recently into this kind of like a new genre emerging called hyper pop. What's that? Uh, it's <laughs> fucking Direct wild. straight into your eyes. <laughs> it's insane. It's like, uh, imagine like pop songs dialed up to like 120% where the production is is like insanely electronic and, okay. and like process, o- over the top vocals. process vocals. Yeah, really like, auto-tuned and pitched and tweaked, but there's an amazing artist called uh, Breakins who just dropped a wild like Break-ins. concept album, Breakins, yeah. Okay. It's one of those albums where it's like, it's supposed to be listened to from start to finish just in one sitting. Right. It's not like singles, like songs just, just lead into the place, next yeah. thing. Right. So it's like a musical experience. Ooh, but I, cool. I had so many people recommend it to me and it's pretty wild, it's pretty out there. But yeah. I sat down and I was like, you know what, I never just listened to I, I listen to music while I'm doing shit, but I never just like sit and like have a really coffee true. and listen like, yeah, to music. Yeah. And uh, this album was like wild enough that I was, I was like, this is fucking, I haven't heard anything like this in a long time. Love it's it. Nuts. So that's great. And then also I just love uh, pop music and acoustic music. I'm a big Jack Johnson fan, you know, there's something to be said for just a good song. So it's a lot of my musical influences. Bang into that, mate. Daniel, what would your lawmaster lair look like if price, time, and uh, reality didn't matter? I, know, like, I could see you in a Croup's archive sort of situation. No, I think the thing I've always wanted, like <laughs> one day, if I get like a house that actually has more than one room, mm. um, I would like to have <laughs> a, a library, and I would like 
basically I'd like to mod it on like a Victorian um, library or reading room. Yeah. yeah. And I would like a lot of dark woods, like a dark green, yeah. Persian rugs. That's kind of what I want for my library slash office when I'm a grown up. <sighs> Basically, the library and House of Monkeys in Jonathan Creek. Essentially, yes. I mean, also, slash with basically the house from Knives Out. Yeah. Well, so I actually have... have bought a lot of weird ephemera from the Victorian period that mm. needs a frame. So I've got original papers from the Victorian era of like seances being happened. Last night, I won an auction on eBay. Wasn't for much money, <laughs> but I've bought a program for an original. 1927 production of Bella Lugosi in Dracula. Fantastic. Wow. That's yeah, wasn't much money at all. I'm going to frame it. Yeah. I've got a couple of other little like things like that. I just like these like, because it was the first era of mass printing. So yeah. There's all this stuff out there and you can buy it for not that much money just because yeah. it was the first time this stuff was mass produced. Actually, yeah, yeah. So they're not like super collectible. No. That's crazy. It's like it's still a cool little artifact. Yeah. Though, right? yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's a really that's cool, awesome. beautiful image as well. That's the thing. You're not buying it as, you're not buying it to like sell hold on. onto it and no, sell no, it on. I just want to frame it because it's, it's cool. a cool thing. Yeah. Absolutely. I've got the other thing I bought recently. It was from um, a U.S. Navy base in Hawaii, and they did an army production of Dracula. Oh! And I've got the army <laughs> program they made and a little ticket. That's it was like funny. honestly, it was like fifteen quid. I was just like, yeah. what's a weird little thing? I basically want to have a Dracula wall. Anyway, love it, <laughs> love it. Uh, Gav, I have a Welsh uh, friend who loves you. Thank you very much. She listened to regular features and knew you well from IGN. Show me a favorite pastime is watching Dark Souls let's plays and streams as she works. She hadn't heard of RKG or PTT. You're joking. Yeah, she was astounded. Oh, she's not. She was, she was Wait, astounded what? when she... I told her uh, this only a few months ago. This isn't so much a question as an opportunity for you to shame her. Uh, shame your Welsh king, Gav. So she was a Welsh person who listened to regular features, loved us on IGN. But separately loved Dark Souls streams. Yeah. That's wild. And didn't know that we existed. We do have that. Now, like every few months, someone will just be like, I was like, wait, what's RKG? It's like, I remember you guys from uh, IGN. And some people just didn't get the memo and come over. And they've got like a treat where it's like three years of content. Just yeah. For yeah. Out hundreds of hours. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I hope she's having a good time. Or uh, like my fear would be she gets me and oh, it's not for me. For the future yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, what are your first steps when planning a uh, content project like Dark Souls 2, Sekiro, and now Elden Ring? Uh, it is breaking down a game progress route. So from beginning to end, working out what is the best way to experience that game, which mm. with the From games isn't necessarily linear because you can go and sequence break and do things in other yeah. orders. So the big challenge, I think, with other playthrough is we never want you to be over-leveled. Yeah. We never want to be in an area because you can do it out of sequence because if you go through an area and you just OP. Yeah. And we have this a little bit with Demon Souls because it's very easy to get quite strong quite early in yeah, some ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't want to go through. They want a nice level of struggle. So yeah. what I do is I break it all down into areas. You see in the spreadsheet. All the sections, all the bosses in sections. But then, because we want to experience that game to the fullest and do like as many NPC quests as possible, yeah. I want you to see and experience much of that game as possible, which I missed a lot of that on my front. That's that what I was going to say. I want to basically yeah. give you, if you could say to someone, what is the best play yeah. through this game? I want to give you that and our series that. So it's making sure you hit all the bits. But in also a very unobtrusive way. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to be going worry left, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because it's open world. So there's a degree of like latitude where you can be free. And if like you go off on a tangent, let's make that into an episode. Yeah. Let's yeah. lean into it and we'll make it an extra episode. Because so we've not got a hard episode plan. We've got a rough compass bearing. Yeah. Right. That's the thing I was going to say is like you're going to experience stuff in Elden Ring that you've not really seen. Yeah, and I've seen, done it after like, yeah. an out of sequence. I was like, oh, I wish yeah. I'd seen this then. Yeah. But like, we're going to have as many of the NPC quests viable until the end. Yeah. We're going to have as many endings in play as possible. So when we get to the end, we can say to you, which ending do you want to choose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we can do the other ones as another episode. Like Even people who have played Elden Ring are going to love that. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of stuff they've missed. I think that's the yeah, ambition absolutely. we have with it. It's like, we want to make something. It's going to take us a long while to make, and it's a long time to go out. But when we're done with that game and the final episode rolls, we will make the definitive playthrough on Elden Ring on the internet. I think like I feel very confident that we're able to achieve that. I think that that should be our aim all the time. And I think like do people then go, well, why didn't you play it closer to when it came out? That's why we didn't fucking play it when it came out because it would have been shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we want we want to make the best ever Elden Ring Let's Play. Also, we were busy, so <laughs> no. that's why. Finishing the last game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <clears throat> 
Uh, Powers, you seem suspiciously sober playing Cuphead in the final episode, despite allegedly drinking five pints beforehand. Was this all a big lie? There's no way I what? seem sober in that episode. I've I, did edited they watch it, that I tell episode? you now. <laughs> like, yeah, no way. <laughs> That's one of the hardest edits I've ever done. I, uh, I'm actually slightly embarrassed. <laughs> I have a, a, a weird thing, because everyone also like reacts to alcohol like very differently. Mm. And I think uh, my gift and my curse is even when I am very, very drunk, I can still kind of compose myself very well. So if you maybe from the outside, <laughs> yeah, no, like, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Decently well, you know, I'm not yeah, like, yeah. but you're yeah, not like yeah, all yeah. over the place. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm not like yeah. sorry, my words are like stumbly or you know, a lot of other ways yeah. other people get drunk. No, yeah. so I can see why maybe it doesn't look like I've had a lot to drink. But then I've also, <laughs> also like, let me tell you, <laughs> you do. we all look fucking Steven. It does as well. Like, I'm wearing like a backwards hat, <laughs> yeah. my aviator sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, that's also the, the final boss takes about four hours. It was a yeah. hard boss, um, fucking boss. Yeah, that's an odd question. I had to put that one in, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is for all of us. It says, what's your guys' opinion on AI art? As an artist, it both excites and scares the fuck out of me. Um, I, I feel like the only thing that I've seen is either awful <laughs> profile pictures was like, look at me, but look at me in space. So I have no interest in that. Um, or I've seen the people who are like, oh, they've stolen art. Well, it's from the, it's the ethical like, dimension to it. Like, yeah. I think also like, with this, you've got to take lead from people who are actual artists and working yes. in that field. And they're saying, this is really bad. One, it's a threat to their livelihood. Yeah. And this is also the precursor to this. You've seen like people who have experienced what artists are experiencing now with AI are. They've had this already. Yeah. It's people who work in translation. Right, okay, yeah. Because AI translation is a thing. Even Google Translate is like yeah. a easier version of that. But AI translation exists. Yeah. Everyone who is like a translator has spent years achieving bilingual fluency yeah. is our job now. Because yeah. companies who, they'll go, that's good enough. That's fine, yeah. yeah. And yeah, then yeah. they're hiring these translators to touch that translation up. And yeah. they're like... Because it'll be less it'll be less time. It'll yeah, be like, and yeah. they're like, it's actually more time. Because yeah. they're like saying, I have to go back to the original and just do it all over again for yeah. half the money I used to. Yeah. I think, that, that's, and I think thing. that's what's threatening art is. And yeah. also ethical, you're stealing their work. Yeah. Like Clara's been like, she was asking me about it the other day and she was like, well, she's like, I'm not hugely worried about it in terms of like myself because I can, uh, I still have to do the tattoo. Yeah. But she was like, for my actual prints and things, even though I block print everything by hand and if you want that style, you can tell the difference between something that's been just been printed by a computer and something mm. that's been printed by hand. But then if someone was just like, well, I want to pay for that. A lot of people don't types it Types in like, whatever, like love heart block print. And be like, well, there we go, that was it. I was down on the South Bank the other day and they were selling loads of prints and they're all by artists I knew. They had a load of like Star Wars portraits by Mike Mitchell right. and they had loads of like these Marvel things by this artist called 100% Soft who does all the Marvel emojis. Yeah. They just printed them out. They, and they're quite like low like um, pixel density. Yeah. So they literally just right click save and printed them out. That's crazy. Wow. And like the colors are like weak on them. And it's just like, but the thing is, a lot of people won't care. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. go, this is a cool little Princess Leia print. Let's yeah, go, let's yeah. go to it though, because I'm yeah. And I think that is, it devalues what being an artist is. A, like a working artist. Mm. So yeah, it's probably not great, is it? But you get cool pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, like people are just going, I get these cool pictures. Because it's like, normally to get those pictures, you'd have to commission an artist. Yeah. yeah. I think it's hard. AI art in particular is, is controversial because I think what a lot of people have found with some of these softwares is like it's obviously generating art based off the world's collective contribution to art. So even though it looks like it's creating new pieces, it's yeah. basically like stealing. It's reconfiguring other like styles, yeah. Because people, I think, were getting art generated and then seeing water artists' watermarks yeah, in their yeah, a yeah. AI art. Because it's obviously just taking it and repurposing it. Yeah. So yeah. the thing is, people won't get it until it comes for them. Yeah. You're like, oh, now they're into robots it. doing yeah, my job, yeah. is it? Yeah. You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> they can do Let's Plays. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why don't we shut it down? I'll pull these boys. So, um. <laughs> Put your heat in on though, mate. Put some I haven't on. yet. Yeah, do a time with it. How are you drying your clothes? Uh, That's a question, know. actually. <laughs> <laughs> how are you drying clothes? Excuse me. Who dries your clothes? They're going to be like, is it weird? Why Why did the person in your in your video have an RKD shirt on? That's looking old rich. Should have bought a new one. We, we've bought a pub. That's the end goal, mate. I'll oh, tell yeah. you that. Yeah, oh my Absolutely. God. 
Just sip, so no one's going for it. Oh, that's the we fucking, we got, we're probably going to get another three of these. I know, but we, mate, we need to get through the questions, not the pints. Like... Powers, are the nips smooth or, or hairy? <laughs> <laughs> and just, just build towards a... Bollocks! Is the nips thing? Are the nips smooth or hairy? Uh, pretty smooth. Pretty smooth, I yeah. Say, yeah. That's a quick one. Um, I got that dolphin body. <laughs> Very aerodynamic in the water. No legs. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, what is your favourite film outside of the horror and sci-fi genre? It just makes these questions make you realise what you put out there publicly that oh, you become like yeah. stereotypes. This thing. I do really like horror. It's like yeah. I think it's like one of the few things I tweet about. Uh, <laughs> what film do I like outside of that? Uh... At least I'm not asking you about your nipples. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. <laughs> I'd, rather be, I'd rather be known for that. Um, oh fucking hell! I don't even know. Because a lot of it is what... like a comedy film. <laughs> What was the question? Was to it be nips? fair, you're like, <laughs> like you were like, I like, I like other things other than horror. <laughs> <laughs> What's your other film? I don't know, don't really watch them. <laughs> but, um, kind of a horror guy. Uh, Trois Colors Bleu. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I would say I'll fucking, I can't even think of another film right now. Terminator, sci-fi, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's all got elements of it though, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Gav, what's your favorite feature about yourself? Um, <laughs> I know this is really cheesy, but I generally do think being Welsh. I think, <laughs> like okay. genuinely, I genuinely like, it's hard to explain to people who are not Welsh or don't feel like that, but I genuinely, there are times when I'll just get a text from other people who are Welsh friends of mine. It's happened loads this year. Um, but just being like, God, being Welsh is fucking brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> like genuinely. And I do just feel genuinely lucky. Like there's a Catatonia song that is like, every day when I wake up, I thank the Lord I'm Welsh. And I genuinely, I, I do think, like I just think there's just something amazing about being Welsh. And uh, sometimes I get stressed thinking how lucky I am to have been born Welsh. So I think that's what. That's I'd what say I'm your for. face. Thanks. I think you got a good face. Thank you very much, man. I needed yeah. that. Yeah. That's what I would say. Thanks. I'd say that. Penis. Smooth nipples. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Smooth Welsh nipples. Uh, Daniel, you've been approached by a big production company and are tasked with remaking any famous horror icon of your choosing into a new movie. That's it can be any genre or style you like and can be completely new and different to its original. What would you pick? No limits. I think we talked about this before, but... Yeah. Um, or we could, I mean, on Jonathan Creek, we came up really, with I mean, the best possible Jonathan Creek episode. And on Halloween, we came up with a really cool modern Halloween I would film. like to, because they've not done it for a while, they did a remake that was awful. Mm. I'd like to do Freddy Krueger, take it back to its origins. Yeah. But my twist would be, he was actually innocent. Yeah. And then you'd find that out in the final act. And so there would be a kind of... We talked of, about this, we were like, is he innocent? No, he's not. No. He's like, <laughs> you see some shit he did in dreams? Because. What's he doing in real life? <laughs> if I could ever do a film, I'd love to do like loads of practical effects and loads of visual effects. Yeah, mm. that's a and, good movie for And it, it's the for perfect sure. film because every kill can just be this like fantasy kill. Yeah. yeah. I remember like I was very lucky. I mean, it's not a great film, but when I was at IGN, I went on a few set visits. And one of the last set of visits I went on was the new Hellboy movie. And I've still never seen that film. But yeah. the best thing about that set visit was I got to go to like a practical effects studio yeah. where there was all these animatronic monsters and so stuff. And I was cool. just like, awesome. as a kid, that's what I loved about movies. Yeah, like yeah. just weird monsters and weird yeah. creatures and special effects is mm. just as concept, as a, as a discipline. That's yeah. what Clara trained in. So she trained yeah, in like prosthetics yeah. and animatronics and things like that. So that's what she was going to do. Um, like, she trained with Hellboy. With Hellboy, As yeah. As a demon slayer. I don't and know what he does, but it's something like and that. And like, sometimes I'm like, oh, would you like to have done that? She was like, it's a really, really odd industry. But she was, and I didn't like that the bits terrible. that I saw yeah. in it. Um, the monsters. It's like yes, it's a weird industry. Do like a new crew. <laughs> Co-workers like, are not. They haven't yeah. done one for ages. I mean. I think the they kind of missed the mark. The thing what Fuller's doing with Friday the 13th sounds amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I us say Nightmare on Elm Street. I love it. Okay. Powers, what would be your dream three band lineup stadium gig? You can pick any bands from history, uh, but you need to start in middle and main act. Jesus, that's a hard question. So who's opening? Oh, I don't know. I feel like if I'm if I'm picking a lineup for a gig, I want them to be all like kind of similar styles. Okay. Because you don't want to do want to, all yeah, mismatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, completely no. Disregard that. I want the exact opposite. <laughs> Because if it's fancy, pick whatever you want. Because yeah, 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 I just realized I can pick whoever I want. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start with Jack Johnson. Okay. To be fair, he's we, opening. We kind of had a a dream lineup for uh, the, the Weezer thing, the, yeah. the show that we went to in London, which was Weezer as a yeah. starter. I probably would have swapped out Fall Out Boy because yeah. I'm just not a huge Fall Who Out Boy. Yeah. Maybe some in uh, Blink. 
Mm, yeah, it'd be good be if we're going really punk. Been if you want to keep yeah. it punk, I'm coming back. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> to be fair, I probably no. <laughs> yeah, I'd sub in Blink. <laughs> if I'm going to punk show, it's gonna go Weezer. It's gonna go Blink. Then it's gonna go My Chemical Romance. Bit God, emo, man. but still pretty <laughs> like rocky. And I yeah. went to see them uh, this year for the first time, It'd and it best. was one of the best gigs of my entire life. So oh. definitely recommend My Chemical Romance. Love it. This is for all of us. Uh, says, given how much social media is part of your job, do you still enjoy using it in your personal life? No, I barely use it. Oh, really? I barely use yeah. my Twitter. I use Instagram stories more than anything, just to do like little things. Yeah. I don't really tweet anymore. I've I've had um I've had periods, especially this year, where I'll like have guilt where I'm like I should probably tweet something, and I'll mm. check, and I'm like I haven't tweeted in two weeks or something. Like I just haven't because we've been busy doing stuff. But, but yeah, I, if, if you're going to tweet a banger, though, that's the thing. I think the people who use it like too much, like when they were saying, oh, there should be a Twitter limit on characters, there should be a Twitter limit on how many times you like to tweet a day. But like, mm. I think mean, like yeah. everyone gets three a day. That's it. That's all you get. Replies, tweets, No one anything. needs three a day. Like, one a day. People are that's like, but you get, get to, you can reply to people then. Like, that's fine. I feel like some people are overboard with it. And I guess people use it in a different way. Like, mm. I, I guess like when we were sitting around, when we were more plugged into the pop culture machine, maybe at IGN, yeah. we were like, oh, I'm going to tweet this out for what I think about this. But yeah, I, I, I feel like I don't need people to know my opinions on things as much anymore. I, I, this so month, I got an app on my phone that I downloaded mm. so that every time I click to open AI Twitter... Tweets. You're doing AI tweets. It, this app redirects to another app yeah. that says like, breathe for a second, and it does like right. an in, and then it does like an out, and then it goes, do you still want to open Twitter? Yeah, yeah, And half the times I'm like, I guess I don't really. I was just doing it out of like habit. I was going to go check it. Take so that's the- actually helped. I barely go on it as much anymore because yeah. it's just sometimes you're on autopilot well, and you're just scrolling. Honestly, take the app off your phone. That's what I did during lockdown. I, I took, can't do I, that, I took the man. Twitter you're app crazy. off my phone. I only use it in browser. And using it in browser is a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> so you just don't want to hang out in the app. I think you tweet like, more than both of us. You don't even have it on your phone. Yeah, just tweet for my thing. Wow. But I just, the thing is, though, I, I made a consistent thing. like, I just tweet bangers. That's all I'm tweeting now. Right, so yeah. If anything is less than 100 likes, get rid of that. Just delete that. <laughs> Unless it's about whales. If it's about whales, I'll leave it up. If it's not, gone. Have you ever posted a tweet mm. you think is going to be a banger and you're waiting for those numbers to come in and you're. And then you're yeah, like, everyone's got what's them. What's the cough point? Everyone's what's the cough point? Yeah. yeah. No, no, in terms of time. time. Oh, time. I, I think you kind of know straight away whether or not it's going to go. And if it doesn't go, you're just like, well, that's not funny then. Get rid of it. I think a lot of people do a lot more about that. But yeah. Like. It definitely should be. I think that should be the limit that they should introduce. Not four thousand characters, which I think is what's been moved this week. Um, <laughs> Powers with so many hard games now under your belt. Do you feel more confident when it comes to playing hard games, or do they still intimidate you? Uh, depends on the game. I think I have a lot of confidence, probably undeserving, uh, when it comes to FromSoft games. Like even Elden Ring. Like walking into those games, as soon as I get. A... <laughs> go go. Just a guy who's not meant to be in the window coming to the window. Coco, to be fair, you were actually in the right there. Yeah. Like, even though we don't... Come on. I should spot that. Yeah. You were half in the right then, yeah. you need to be fair. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you still have do you st- game, hard games? Uh, with FromSoft games, I yeah. think I've got a bit of confidence. If I can feel I'll a fucking, bit of the, the formula. You know when you play those games, it was different where it's like, I got humbled very quick with Sekiro. Oh, yeah. Because it's yeah, a yeah. very different thing. But even when you're playing uh, Demon Souls, it's like, yeah, 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 I get it. Parry with this, whack with this, let's go. I'm, I'm yeah, feeling yeah, confident. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'll probably get that in Elden Ring before I'm, oh, so I'm humbled. <laughs> <laughs> we'll revisit that in 100 hard, questions uh, <laughs> next time. Um, Daniel, I have seen you wear lots of superhero t-shirts, but I was curious, who is your favorite superhero? What? I don't wear them that much anymore. They're back in the old days. Uh, I don't know who your favorite hero is. Uh, that's point. I'd probably say Spider-Man, I reckon. I'd say Spider-Man. Yeah. I'd probably, yeah, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Uh, Gav, did you ever get your Mr. Blobby tattoo and will you do another charity uh, Jigsaw stream in 2023? I didn't get my Mr. Blobby tattoo, but I have the design and I know I owe it to people as well. Um, and I really do want to do another Jigsaw stream because they were wild um, and a very, very weird thing. But the, uh, we raised like fucking like 1,200 quid all in all for that charity because I thought it was really good. Gav, do you ever get confident going into new Jigsaws based uh, on your past experience? No, absolutely not <laughs> because they are really hard to do and they're really hard to do under the cosh. But I do actually have an idea of 
what I want the next one to look like. Because we essentially, in the, the Jigsaw box. streams, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, de definitely with it, like, use a higher quality image. <laughs> I'm thinking um, the next one's going to be a Japanese garden, because uh, that's kind of what's on the box. Beans, all beans. <laughs> well, no, because that's the thing. When it was on the box, it was fine. The one that wasn't on the box is the one I got in trouble with. Like, what do you mean one was not on the box? But I made my own jigsaw. Oh, right, okay. So I made my own jigsaw from it. Um, but I've got, like, those jigsaws end up turning into, like, a you make your own jigsaw like... by just smashing up a normal picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I do it, yeah. <laughs> no, it... That's how he made them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, be it becomes, like, essentially, like, YouTube does a jigsaw, essentially, because people are spotting from the camera, spotting the uh, images. Yeah. But that doesn't happen until late on. But I think I've, I've come up with a way where that can happen a lot earlier based on a graphic that we'll design, because I've got an idea for it, but I need your input on it to be able to see, see if it works. But I've got an idea of basically essentially like superimposing the grid on there right. from the start, you know? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. that's how we put them all in the right, thing. Okay. So people can gotcha. be going, B4. oh, yeah, exactly. From it's almost the like start. a chess game, B4 to A1. Well, that's what, the, that's what the stream ends up being, but yeah. it only happens but later you, on when you've you got rid of them have a rubric where you're doing it like what would a5 be actually yeah exactly yeah you yeah. know what i was thinking about when you're talking about that? you yeah. know the most decadent like if you were like super mad rich like yeah. elon musk rich yeah, yeah you yeah. could buy like a famous piece of art and turn it into a jigsaw a jigsaw yeah imagine yeah. that like you buy like an original you buy guernica and, and just like stamp it into stream, a jigsaw yeah. i don't would you be allowed to do that would, yeah, like, yeah. would, would, would the world let you destroy no. a priceless work of art? Would someone would someone be able to intercede and just go, don't do that? You've already done it. But the thing is, if you, you bought it, it, you own it. You own it. And you've yeah. done it. And people are like, oh, I would have rather you not done that. It's Jigsaw now. Maybe enough. you could do something cool, like turn into a jigsaw and hide a piece in every corner of the world. Oh, I love this. Just and like people have to it. try and reassemble. It. Just like he yeah. wanted. Challenging. I love that. He didn't say it in words as much, but we That's a really good idea. Right? Nothing more abstract than that. And then at the end, when they come together, then the billionaire is like, what you should have known was the true art, was the journey you had as friends. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that, yeah, yeah. Uh, Daniel, who would win in a fight? Manus, Lawrence, or the Demon of Hatred? Straight up, street fight. Um, Manus got in a Manus, ring. In a, Manus, in a ring. Manus, though, because Manus is the that father of the abyss. Yeah. yeah. Didn't beat me, though, did he? Well, he did if he I did. I mean, he's eight. Yeah, he did. I tell you what, he beat you more the times than you beat him. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. He's like, I only need one. I only need one. Uh, Powers, how often <laughs> did you visit the Serial Killers Cafe in London? Uh, you were very excited about it in a 2014 IGN UK <laughs> podcast that I've only just listened to. Eight years ago. That happens to be I your was. first ever podcast. I was. That's your first ever <laughs> IGN UK podcast. Was it? Yes. Yeah. And you were talking about Serial Killers. Eight yeah. years ago, that. Jesus. I told you that recently I was, for some reason, an IGN UK podcast got pushed into my YouTube algorithm. Mm. And it was me, Gav, and Al. And I clicked on it. I couldn't even listen to it. I was—I think it was one of my <laughs> early ones. Like I was very shy and not really talking. Uh, mm. I think I got roasted on that podcast for bringing up the Serial Killers Cafe. Not by me. I want to know. I it thought was it, by was Al. By no, it was by you. No, it was by Al. It was by Al. Yeah. Someone was just being like, being miserable, being like, "Fucking fifteen yeah. quid for a little bowl of cereal," and it's like, yeah. it's also, it's not though, fifteen. It? it wasn't fifteen quid. It was like a five or a thing. Whatever. Like, yeah. 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 And little um, did you know, years later, they would be our neighbours. They were our, our neighbours and yeah. two twins from uh, Northern Ireland. Yeah. And you slagging them off. You can hear yeah, them. Yeah, I was praising them. You can hear a lot of their music sometimes, I think, in the Sekiro episodes. When we were filming Sekiro, <laughs> oh, right. they tunes. would listen to show tunes like yeah. Full Blast. Love Hamilton. They yeah. loved it. Uh, I went twice. Uh, and it was very I nice. Like, I believe it no longer exists, no, but they sound. sell their own oh, like, novelty series. It's probably better online. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about it. It's like, it's just good good online idea. Yeah. Uh, this is for all of us. It says, what is your favorite Christmas movie and why is it Muppets Christmas Carol? Mm. It's Muppets Christmas. Is your favorite Christmas movie? That is yours, right? You always call it that. I wrestle every year between Muppets Christmas Carol and Die Hard now. Jingle All the Way. Oh, Jingle All the Way. I've never but... seen Jingle All the Way. <gasps> Shut so the good, fuck man. up, Daniel Cripper. You've never seen <laughs> it. What are it's you talking so about? Good. What are we doing it. here I'm, now? Well, this. I think it's a generally good film. I, well, I've never well, seen well, it. Well, you it. have to watch it with yeah. us. You well, literally, well, I refuse well, to watch it. Is that the way to watch it for the first time? No, it is. It 100% is. It genuinely is. No, because we did Jingle All the Way for the producer's live stream last year and we weren't booed 
booze in for it, by the yeah. way. We had a couple of beers, but we were just enjoying the film. Did we? Yes, we did, yeah. I, I That's not a good indication that. you weren't boozing. Like, yeah, no, it really isn't. Is. When did we do that? <laughs> Last Christmas. No, that's a lie. It's You're not. making this up to freak it exists. Me out. Do you remember we were like joking about uh, Arnie had invented the YouTuber <laughs> <laughs> face? Because okay, yeah. his face on the, on the, yeah, like, yeah, and the that, picture that I had that, was that, him just doing this. That, that was like, <laughs> you won't believe what <laughs> yeah. happened this Christmas. <laughs> you won't believe how much a Turbo Man cost. <laughs> No, genuinely, it's a really it's, good it's movie really to watch. Good. I'm not anti it. I yeah. just haven't seen it. I just haven't seen it. Do we have time? It's not got today. A, not it's, now. Got a, it's got a lot of really yeah. good elements. That I think is like it is very modern mm. and it feels really modern, but it's got a lot of good elements. It's like it's a quest film. Yeah. Um, it's a very funny film. It's there's lots of. It's basically one man against another man trying to get this toy. It's it's, it's, it's all based around I think around you know like how fucking crazy people went for like Buzz Lightyear mm. and stuff like that. It's basically that. Mm. Um, but also. The Really cool How thing much about will it. you embrace the spirit of anti Christmas to give your son a good yeah. Christmas? Yeah, oh, 100%. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 But, but there's like the, the cool thing about it as well is Phil Hartman. Um, from oh, yeah, The Simpsons yeah. is in it and he plays the neighbour like the really annoying oh. neighbour and Phil Hartman does one voice and that is like Lionel Hutz is he really like, funny that's Phil Troy Hartman McClure turns up like, in the film and you're like he's great and he yeah. turns up in So I Married an Axe Murderer yeah, he does, yeah, yeah. and Alcatraz and he's like yeah. he steals it yeah. he absolutely steals it it's I think, the same with this movie um, like he's incredible if you've, ever li- if you've ever listened to people talk about Phil Hartman like that's what they talk about all the time it's just like, a thing. he was basically a guy that they would just be like Oh, this needs punching up a little bit. Should we give Phil a call? And then he would just you come in and be like, Phil, we're going to give you this like role and he would like just act to smash yeah, it. Yeah. The, the, the guy who does that is, um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head now, but he's Dr. Um, Spaceman in 30 Rock. And he was, he did, uh, is that guy from SNL who did like, he's also did the, the um, Lazy Sunday guy. Is the other guy, uh, Chris Parnell, that's it, yeah. Oh, Chris apparently, Parnell. Apparently he's like another guy as well where they'd be like, God, this film's a bit shit, isn't it? Should we get Chris Parnell? Imagine being that, like, like, the script doctor, because like, yeah. that's the thing with script doctors. Like, what you're saying is like, imagine being that guy who's like, person who gets the phone call, you're like, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, yeah. Two days, is it? To be yeah. fair, that's Chris cool. Parnell, he turns up in a lot of movies. He's where, the funniest person. And he's, he's hilarious. Every yeah. time you're like, oh, every time you see him, you're like, just oh, gives you a couple of lines. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. That's smashes it. it. Yeah. Um, what's yours? Ooh. I do generally think I have the most fun watching Die Hard at Christmas. Um, but the thing that I watch all the time, and it's long enough that we can say it's a film, is Black Canary, the Jonathan Creek Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah, that's very very originally came out on Christmas Eve. I watched Eve. it on Christmas Day this like, year. Like, um, I think that's really, really good. But I also like, that's the thing, I watch a lot, a lot of, of TV specials. Yeah, same I watch as a kid, say. like the bottom Christmas special Fantastic. I love. Yeah. For the tech Christmas special I love. These are things I watched the first time when I was younger, and then yeah. I watched them every year because back then I was, I mean, you don't really watch loads of TV now. No. But back for me, it was like planning TV watching. Yeah. So I was like so into TV as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. And just like, oh, is this new special? New special. Yeah. And like all comedy shows that have a Christmas special, I'm really into. But even like the X Files one, I watch every single year now. And it's a, it's That's a Christmas, a, I know you thought that. It's a Christmas ghost story that takes place on Christmas Eve. And they properly, it's one of those um, X Files episodes where they go balls out and just go, there's fucking ghosts in the world, all right? Like, there's no, like, oh, <laughs> right, no, were they aliens? Right. Or were they this? There's fucking ghosts. There's ghosts exist. So and it's, like, what? And it's such a good story. And I should watch it. You should it's definitely watch it. It's really good, like, yeah. Even in recent, um, League of German Christmas special. Yeah. Um, now there's a couple of Inside Number Nines. Yeah. There's going to yeah, be a yeah. third one this year. Love All it. those BBC ghost stories for Christmas. Perfect. So much, like, good stuff. Also, like, for one movie, I do always watch Scrooged. Oh, Scrooge is so good. I love Scrooge. Yeah, it's so good. I've never Murray. seen it. Oh. Yeah, we've uh, talked about it. Well, maybe one, next year we do that. We'll do a little swap. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's basically a Christmas Carol, but with Bill Murray as yeah. a TV exec. Imagine Bill Murray just no, cooked, I have seen cooked off his nuts. I have seen this. I, I watched this. Bill Murray yeah. doing Christmas. <laughs> I watched this for the first time last year because it was on TV good. and I was it's like. Jim Henson does yeah. all the, the oh, yeah, tricks. It was not what I was expecting. Mm. I think I it would I would have enjoyed it more if someone had kind of briefed me on what that movie was before I watched it. Yeah. It's Bill Murray it was does Scrooge. Like... Insane. <clears throat> Powers. It was what, wild. What do you like most about living in London? I would say serial killer cafe. Serial killer cafe. Serial killer cafe. <laughs> I've been there twice. Serial killer cafe. Good ball. Good yeah. ball. It's a good ball. Good balls. Good balls. Good, good, good lads. Good balls. That's what you say. That's what you say for the cereals, which to me, you hey, good ball. Good ball. Good ball. Uh, good ball. That. Can, I'll tell you right now. I'm look, I'm <laughs> yeah. looking at him. I'm looking at him. That's Guinness. my favorite bit. I'm not in there. A couple pints of Guinness. Ah, no, cheers. it's there it's you, you guys. I love living in a sit a fun city with my friends. Um, London's London's a great place. I'm I think. Uh, I'm, 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 
Ankin. And Kintan. No, yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, no, scrap that, scrap that. Kintan is probably my favorite, uh, which is, if you don't know, it's a Japanese barbecue place yeah. that I went there. It's my, it my last Kintan of 2020. Are you sure? Because it's a couple a of weeks left, mate. Yeah. Like. Uh, and we, we went and it was like, um, have you guys booked a table? Yeah. We're like, yeah, yeah, we're booked for it. He's like, I know you guys. Yeah. And he's like, oh. the, the twins. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah. And he was like, hey, back again. And he was like, I'll show you so your table, like, sirs. He's like, he's like, so I usually ask people uh, if this is their first time, but you guys, come on. And I was like, oh boy, we're we're actually regulars here at this point. But yeah, you are pretty regular. Uh, but it was really nice because then uh, when we were leaving and stuff, he was like, I won't, won't be too long before it's guys again. It's a place where you, you yeah. kind of the regular. Yeah. I, I went there with you in the summer and like, <laughs> it is awesome seeing you order for, because like it was me, you and Joe, and yeah. you were just like, you were just, I don't think you even asked us what we wanted. I, think I didn't even did. look at a menu I think either. You just kind of like went. He's like, and then we were going to order something. He was like, "Don't get that." Um, <laughs> it wasn't like, "Yeah, we could." He was like, "Don't we're get that." The don't get that. Uh, we're going to get <laughs> one of the chicken karages, uh, two of the hanger steaks with the miso sauce, and a toro beef. The usual. <laughs> the usual. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, you fucking rich. She <laughs> <laughs> gets bored now and again. So it's like, uh, Daniel, last year on the hundred questions, you said um, that there was a three-player co-op game that you wanted RKG to play in 2022. Um, oh, yeah. What was the game? I, I think I know I, what it I, is. I, I think it was GTA Heist. Yeah, it was. Oh, I think yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah. doing the Heist thing. And yeah. like, the thing is, with that, it, it's been out for so long now. Mm. You can kind of do it any time. Yeah. It's just like slotting it in with our schedule. Yeah. yeah. And it's because that's been up so long. It's never really a priority because no. it's higher priority projects right now. Like we yeah. can't like not do Elden Ring because we're going to do GHA Heist. It's also <laughs> Come a, on yeah, it's a big old, but the way we want to do it as well, we've talked about is like doing it in a cool way. <coughs> yeah. And, and well, we said costumes. And like like yeah. for the prison we'll, heist, we'll, get we'll prison visualizing it. Like yeah. really yeah. turn um, it into something. But I think there's a way of doing it. Definitely. I think I think it'd be cool to do a three-player thing where we're all playing at the same time, and it relies on a degree of in-game co-op and coordination. Yeah, yeah. So, the conversations that we have sometimes when you're playing about what should be done, yeah. you'd actually see that translated into gameplay. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, would yeah, be yeah. a really interesting thing to happen. I think. I think the good thing about doing heist as well is why we've always wanted to do it is like there's an element of there's a huge element of peril. Yeah, and it could go and wrong. It can really again. go wrong. Also, like, start but again. then there's a cut-off yeah. point where it's like. GTA 6 is going to come out at some point. Yeah. If it's something like that, do we just do it with that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, I'd love to do heists. Uh, yeah. We've done a few of them together yeah. back in the IGN. Yeah, I've done all, not all of them. We did some at Rockstar as well. We went the previous, we, the one with the DeLorean. We yes, oh my it. God. It's a flying DeLorean. We did, Those we, games are weird now, man. Like, yeah. There's literally DeLoreans that fly. I love it, yeah. And motorbikes. I got one of the motorbikes with rocket launchers on the side that can fly. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're basically <laughs> like. <laughs> well, I remember when we we did one heist together on like a Friday afternoon, and it like it, it was like the hardest bit was controlling you, and I was it was like I would when we were splitting off, it was me it's and you. Hard. It was like me and you, and then it was like you and Al. So it was just like you and Al to doing things like properly, and then me doing trying to do things properly, but also thinking what you were doing was really funny. So then I was like, oh, you should do this as well. <laughs> like, go you. I think like we had to stop a train, uh, and we were talking about what the best way of stopping a train was. Um, and we tried, we tried it your way, it didn't work. We tried it my way, and it did work. But like yours, your way was basically like, oh, I know where there's a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to keep me in sight at all times, because yeah. otherwise I'm going to get a jet, and I'll be back in a second. Um, yeah, those games good. are fantastic. I'd love to do heists. Uh, this is one for me. It says, Gav, what's your favorite band slash musician of 2022? Uh, according to my Spotify wrapped, um, the newest people I listened to this year were Rory little, Powers, little, obviously. obviously. Late, well, to the party, late but, search, late yeah. search. Uh, late uh, search. That's the thing. Yours came out late, so I think if it was in people's, if it was in people's Spotify rap, either they don't listen to a lot of music or they listen to they you. They, yeah, they, they listen. Be on a list. They yeah. listen to you in a way with a you, you. It's not far off stalking that I think. Um, so I don't I'm think yours would have appeared on that. But according to my thing, the newest, the new bands I listened to were Big Moon, Wet Leg, and Little Sims. Big Moon and Wet, Wet Leg, Leg, yeah, released uh, their debut albums this year or just on the cusp, I think. Um, and just fantastic. And same as Little Sims. Little Sims' new album is out very, very soon as well. But oh. she did an album. Those, those are the three. According to my Spotify rap, which I did put up as well, um, those are the three things I listened to. Yeah, I absolutely smashed that Big Moon album to the point where I was like, this feels like stalking now. Um, <laughs> uh, Daniel, what was your title at IGN? Um, 
I was, well, my final one was managing editor. <laughs> yeah. UK managing editor. I forgot this was a thing. No, I, I didn't know what your believe, job was. I believe it's he- head of entertainment. Oh, yeah. Head of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, wrong. <laughs> there are no right or wrong answers in this whole thing, but that is wrong, actually. I completely forgot about that. Uh, power- Did anyone know what anyone's job was? Yeah, yeah. yeah, people did. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the, the man who didn't have the right paperwork, so he lost his job temporarily. Like, other people know what their jobs are. <laughs> Roy Powers, baby editor uh, for IGN. Powers, uh, watching the yeah. Die Hard stream, you said you'd want to die in an explosion. Um, is, that an ex- <laughs> is that an explosion you know is coming or a surprise? I've said this a worrying amount of times on uh, podcasts and live streams, so I yeah. want to let everyone know right now I don't want to die. But if I did want to die, it would be via an explosion. And there's two ways I would want that to happen. Go. Okay. First one is some sort of giant firework. Perfect. Um, You're strapped to it? I'm strapped to okay, it. Okay, yeah. I'm launched up into the sky. All my friends and family are there, and it's kind of like well, a so you're sandbox. alive. I'm alive, yeah. Well, it's how I want to die, so yeah. I can't be dead earlier. Okay. So just everyone's like, "Hey, Rory, it's been fun. This was a God blast. Speed. Can't see wait later, to buddy. see this. Uh, final high fives. You're like, I'm, I'm ready. Boom, I'm shot ready. Yeah, and yeah. just explodes. Everyone's like, that was fucking awesome. Um, then the, the second explosion that I would like to die in is some sort <laughs> of uh, act of self-sacrifice. Uh, a bomb is going to go off a grenade and I hop on it and I say, get out of here. Live the life I never could and never forget old Roar Bear. And no one's there. Because <laughs> yeah, if you were like, I'm running, I'm yeah. not here. Hey, no, hey, no, listen, listen, I'm g- giving you my last you Basically, will. you want to be Steve Rogers. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So either one, I think there's probably a bit either more uh, respect in yeah. option number two. But if that opportunity never rises, I'll take the big firework. Perfect. I just like to, to, to be dead in a second yeah. in some sort of crazy spectacle that would be awesome fantastic yeah. it's a question for all of us do you wear wigs no 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 what oh no <laughs> no uh it's a question for powers have, have, <laughs> have you worn wigs uh no ever you've never worn a wig never well uh maybe for some sort of christmas party photo booth uh, i knew he, i knew he slipped up one I knew week, so. yeah. daniel Will you wear wigs? Yeah, absolutely. Ah. And for me, Gav, when will you wear wigs? Whenever you ask. Whenever you ask me to wear a wig, I'll wear a wig. If well, I, I'll wear well, a wig on. You know where this is from, right? No. You actually don't know where no, this is from? No, I don't know where from? this is from. This is from, uh, it, it, it's from uh, an interview that Elijah Wood did during... Oh, because um, the, the Ming and Fair Play is, uh, the ends it says, make it an inside joke to someone who isn't in on the joke with no explanation, Ming and Fair Play. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Oh, it's from the, because I always see that Elijah Wood thing pop up and I never watch it. It's so fucking funny. Right. But they got one, of, I forget who the other guy is, they got one of the The guy from Lost. Yeah, to yeah. To like pretend to be an interviewer interviewing mm. Elijah Wood. Samwise Gamgee. No. Dominic. Don, the Dominic. Guy from Lost. The guy from Lost. Yeah, but he's yeah. doing Charlie. this crazy Charlie. like European accent. Not Penny's he's like, he's like, will you wear wigs? And Elijah Wood, it's because it's a radio interview. He doesn't know that is it's him. Is it funny him. when you watch it? It's right. so how did it? It's very well, I mean, This is fun. I like that. that. I like that accent. That's a good accent. That's a good, good accent. accent. That was no diss on you. It was more just the thing behind it's, what you're It's saying. very funny. It's really, really funny. Very good. I didn't know that. I thought, I, because I, when I said to you guys about this next section, I was like, oh, I think this is for like a group of mates or something like that. Mm. Even better. It's for Elijah Wood. Oh. Elijah Wood's writing into the podcast. We're watching that as soon as the podcast is over. Fantastic. Um, I got a question that says, what is your favorite album? Um, I think I thought that's a lot that I listened to, um, I think Mac DeMarco's uh, This Old Dog is really good because it's very funny and silly, but it's about his dad, who he's estranged from. And I'm estranged from my dad. So it's basically there you go. Hits home. A, 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 an album that was l- written for me, and it's really sad stuff on it. Um, but it's also, he's one of the funniest people in the world. So it's, it's him dealing with not having his dad in his life, but... Uh, in a in a sort of it's like he basically says like I mean the weird thing is like I'm I haven't spoken to my dad in five years I look exactly like him really it's so weird and now I've got the mustache it's even worse because my dad had a mustache growing up so I look at pictures <laughs> of my dad now I look exactly like my dad that's crazy but I don't speak to my dad and we're not really mates so it's like this hard thing where it's like every morning my mum's gonna freak out when she sees this she's mustache. not seen in person yet she's not seen in person yet wow. no she's not about um, it. no. 
She oh, doesn't no, know? No, she knows about it, but she doesn't know. Like, when I give her the picture, I was as Gomez, so she's not seen any pictures of me not as Gomez. Right, right. right. he's Gomez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, now it's a bit longer, I look exactly. So that's, there's a weird, weird thing, man, where I look basically like my dad's twin. Like, a guy came up to me in Tesco's before and was like, Carl. Which is my dad's name, and I was like, but like, I was like, what? Do you, like, you know my dad. You know my dad yeah, isn't like thirty no, something. Kind of. But the guy was so confused, and it was the only thing he could ask was like, are you, are you Carl Murphy, and he was like, this guy was like, I used to work with you when you looked like this. Yeah, no, <laughs> he was having like a weird moment, yeah, like, yeah, you know, like yeah. good night, sweetheart. He was like, like, I used to work with your dad like years ago, and he used to look exactly like and then, this. And the like, woman coming up to you went, Carl Yeah. <laughs> So I think, yeah, Magna Marco's This Old Dog is currently what I'm, uh, I think is my favorite album. Um, Daniel, if you could speak any other language uh, in the world, what would it be? Uh, I would like well, to speak... Well, we'll just move on. It's fine. Oh, <laughs> uh, I would like to speak Ukrainian. Nice. Which I spoke until the age of five. Mm. I still have like five... I could like ask for a snack or watch TV. Or Japanese. Yeah. There you go. Fair. Japanese is going to be the one where you bust it out, people are going to be most I, I think Japanese is very satisfying to pronounce yeah, as well. Yeah. And it's not as hard because it's not the tonalities of a Chinese. Yeah. Like, it. It's like fun to say. Yeah. Sunimase. Like, Sunimase. I love saying yeah. that. Sunimai like, Munadeska. Yeah. My brother is learning Feels Chinese nice currently and like... The tonal... I don't think I have an ear for it. It's, yeah. it's a whole different thing. It's, it's like, very, like Nigerian Yoruba. That is a tonal language. I just don't think I can do that. Yeah. yeah. I genuinely so don't layers, think I can. Yeah. But there'll be something that'll click when you're learning and you go, yeah. oh, that's what that is. It just is. feels like then, another element. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, you're joking. Whew. Powers, would you like to make music for a video game? Um, could be your current style or something completely different. Even chip tunes, it says. Uh, maybe, possibly. I'm not sure what game that would be. I don't think I would make chip tune music. But then now and again, you play a game like... Um, uh, what's that game with the fucking Zelda. guy? And you're doing that shit. <laughs> I said any game. Super Meat Boy. It's the Doom. one. Undertale. Uh, uh, Undertale. With that <laughs> guy doing the I'm shit. I'm glad you got it because it was <laughs> just like. Soprano? <laughs> you guys didn't get it? Yeah. Uh, where it is kind of like very, uh, like chiptune esque music, but beautiful. Like li- too, yeah. literally incredible. Oh, okay, yeah. um, and the guy who, I think the guy who made the game did the soundtrack and the music and everything. Nice. So that could be quite fun. So. Who knows? Maybe. Love it. Uh, This is for all of us. What is your favorite TV series of the year? Mine is The Bear, which is on Disney Plus. Severance. Severance, really good. Holy moly, that blew my nuts clean off my body. That was awesome. That was a (laughs) wild show. That was a wild show. Clean off your body? Clean off. I don't think that came out this year, but I watched it this year. Um, I think it did. I think it definitely definitely finished this year. Okay, okay. Um, Yeah, I thought that that show was insane. It blew my mind. I would say the bear as well. Yeah, the bear. The bear as well. It was bear fun because I got to watch you watch the first two episodes of that because I've been going on about it and we had a plane flight together and I was like, oh, dude, you should watch the bear. It's really good. And he watched two no, episodes and you're just like, oh, it's good today. It's not like quite what I expected when no. I read the premise. I really like, I yeah. appreciate just, just the tone of it, I think. Because yeah. like when the idea of like going back to your father's, I was like, I know what kind of drama that is. Oh. It's not quite that. Handled um, badly, I think that is a yeah, shit show. It's quite like. schmaltzy in a way. Um, I really liked it. It's, it's just quite funny as well. It's yeah. like, there's lots of stuff in it. I liked it. It's a lot. The other thing is, it's really funny, but then. Short episodes, only yeah, nine it. in the series, maybe. I think the sad bits in it don't hang about on the sad bits either because yeah, those like, types well, of characters. You can't in natural can't, life. Yeah. I think that's the thing. You can't really pour over something that's really sad because you've got to get on and you've got to fucking do your job, haven't you, sometimes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every day. Yeah. Did it make you want to work in a restaurant? It, I've always wanted to work in a restaurant. Yeah. It's made me uh, want to work in that I, restaurant. Like, you were saying. No. It is so fun. Part of me like would like to like quit all this and like just open a shop but do it on my own terms and you just make a thing and then yeah. run it in a nice way so it's not stressful. Yeah. It's like there's a guy that ramen shop we went to in um, London. Yeah. He used to work in finance. He moved to Japan for five years to learn how to make ramen. Yeah. He's opened that shop. He runs it in a safe and like healthy way. He's never franchised it. Right. Like wow. he could have opened more of those around London. Never has, because he just likes cooking. Yeah. The working in a restaurant was the worst job I've ever had in my entire life. And it's I like I think it's different though. It's like the same as like Tom's Pasta. Like Tom's Pasta is like the you guy do it who as does, a passion project. Yeah. And you do it on your own terms yeah. rather than you're working for a restaurant. Yeah, Tom, being Tom's on the pasta, wait staff is very yeah. different. Tom's Pasta in London, like he started just making lasagnas during lockdown and cycling them to people's houses and just delivering them <laughs> because he'd 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 always made pasta his own life. He'd bought 
or had rented a um, restaurant that was meant to open March 2020. <laughs> so Ooh. he was just like, well, I bought quite a lot of ingredients. He was like, well, I learned to ride a bike and I learned uh, maps of London. And then he just went around. <laughs> And like it's so some of the nicest door. food I've ever had, but like it was every time I go there, it was like it feels like he's having like the best time ever. It's a weird back the door way, like even though it's not ideal. If you get a following as being like the lasagna delivery manager in lockdown, <laughs> yeah, no, it becomes like a yeah, story yeah, yeah. and a narrative, 100%. and you probably get more known than another pasta restaurant yeah. has opened up yeah. in London. It, but honestly, like it's one of those things as well where it's a funny story. So, and then he he moved into the studios that we were in. So I met him and then had his lasagna. We were like, oh yeah, this is amazing. And then I had like I think he'd done like it's gotta a, be, a small it? bit. And then for our Christmas party, and then I went and had the proper one, and I was just losing my mind, going, "This is the best lasagna I've ever had." And then there was a day where I had it twice, which I talk about a lot, and it's just just fucking incredible food, man. Um, but it's just one one guy who makes it all. Like he's just like, I'm just really good at making lasagna. Um, I don't think there's any food I make good enough that I think I could sell it. You I know, think, I think you're probably right on that from me. Yeah. <laughs> Corn. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, you guys but, like spaghetti sandwiches? Yeah. Powers, if you could good. force the USA to adopt one British custom, what would it be? Ooh. Now, that you've, now that you've lived here for a bit. What's a British custom? Oh. What do you mean? Um, like what? Deporting people who's not meant to be here. <laughs> no, they do that already, but don't worry. Being quiet in public places. Uh, quiet, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. There's nothing. I, I, I love custom. America for what it is, and I love England for what it is. I don't know. Like, yeah, well, I don't know what custom I bring over there. I would definitely um, do like, if you order a cup of tea, you haven't got essentially make it yourself, which is in any, most American places, they give you a thing of hot water, then they give you a tea bag in a pack, and then they give you a bit of milk, and then you're like, oh, I'm just making a tea then, am I? Like, yeah, five bucks. You know what, yeah, I'll take over, you. I'll take over uh, Sunday lunch. <gasps> it's not, it's not a thing in the US, and that's a great yeah. thing here. Yeah, it's is there like, a Sunday meal that yeah. Americans have? Brunch, maybe you go for so like... So it's almost like, to Americans, yeah. it's like having Thanksgiving meal like every Sunday. Yeah, yeah like, that's what it is. Are they crazy? It's great. <laughs> you guys also fucking crazy. You think you're crazy having Thanksgiving like three weeks out from Christmas. Yeah, that's joking. Bonkers. That's bonkers. It also just means like on a Sunday you just have a really big meal and just a few pints with your buddies, and yeah. it's just it's a great feeling. It's, it's great. great. So Sunday lunch. I'd Love say. it, Daniel. What game would you like to turn into a film? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I would like to turn into a film. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ah. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say something fucking boring. Just gonna wait. Let's say Bloodborne. Yeah, oh, that's not boring. <laughs> no, this is like so like obvious. It's there like, though. It's it would there. Be good. Like... But also, I think what you do is you don't do the adaptation of the storyline. No, absolutely not. You do like you could do one really NPC. Interesting... Yeah, you do like Bergenworth. Yeah, the college years. And it's just like all these frat boys trying yeah. to get away with stuff under Master Wilhelm. <laughs> oh, he's got eyes everywhere. As he thought. Yeah. As he fuck, he can't see this. Like TP, Master yeah. Wilhelm. <laughs> but sometimes, though, in those games, like an NPC storyline, you think, this is better than a lot of storylines yeah, for like, full films. Scorpion year. Man from Dark Souls 2. <laughs> yeah, I was big into him. Tark. Dark. Yeah, Tark. Eileen the Crow, the yeah. last years. Oh, yeah. She's up north getting mucky. Genichiro, all that shit he did where he's trying to find the other blade. Yeah. Just make that a movie. That, that sounds yeah. really good. I love that. Uh, Gav, what is your second favourite country behind Wales? That's a big one. I was trying to think North of like... Wales? <laughs> trying to think of like, what's closest? No. Um, Patagonia? But I think, I think all the places that I've been, I'd have to think. And I think like either Japan or generally the place where I've loved going the most is Iceland. Um, because I feel like going to Iceland it feels like going to a different planet. Like everything is different. The people are very different, um, um, and the food is fantastic as well. But it just feels like its own little. It is very, very small as well. So you can see quite a lot of it in a small amount of time. Yeah, um, low population. It fe- well, honestly, right, it feels yeah. like a different world. Like yeah, also, like if you go to Reykjavik, if you then go to any other part of the island, yeah. it's very sparsely populated. Yeah. So you could be. In a couple hours drive, like kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I've never been there for summer, and apparently Very summer is fantastic. Landscape. Like, I'd Ooh. like to go there for summer. I've only ever been there for winter, so I think either Japan or Iceland. I think I would be pick. Um, Daniel, Elden Ring question: Will you commit to all main bosses? No summons right here, right now. Story summons okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, ooh, getting commit. We'll yeah. do all main bosses. We'll try and do as many. We'll definitely do all the main bosses. No, I mean like. Summons. Summons oh, summon, for them. Yeah, yeah. Summons. It's like, so no, all the main bosses, no summons. 
I think other than story summons. I think that's what we would do. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what we've done for quite a few of the last series. So I don't think... Yeah, we won't do summons. We will do me? story summons. Summon? Psh, are you kidding me? Wait till you're fucking crying. Mate. <laughs> you're fucking rushing the other stuff. Is, <laughs> if there's a system for summoning, if he doesn't know how what well, that system is, if you just don't teach him that, then you can't. And then yeah, that's very yeah. true. I would do story yeah. summons because like, we did that yeah, on the original Fresh Road because it's like... Otherwise, you have no connection to those characters. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, also, there's, there's plenty of bosses yeah. in that game that I think also even the summons, because they increase the health bar, doesn't necessarily make it easier. Yeah. yeah. You know when um, people are like, oh, could you play stuff that, rather than playing lots of stuff before you release it, so you do like, you know, we're like we've been releasing series and thing, and they're like, oh, we want to be a little bit more current alongside you. I think 80% of the people who write in and say that are the people who are like, we want to moan at you for what you just did. And I, that, that was the thing that I don't miss from the first series. It's like people in the comments being like, I can't believe you didn't do this, or I can't believe you did this. And you're like, that's the stuff I don't want to read. No, no, no. They'd be like, oh, why don't you do this like next week? And then and like, most people now are like, well, they've already filmed this. There's no point moaning, <laughs> moaning about it. Where people are like, if they think that they can affect what's going on, I think some people are like, mm, I wouldn't have done that. We get that fucking until dawn and shit like that. So yeah, know, yeah. Which is weird because we nailed those plays yeah, exactly. as well. Yeah, <laughs> kill, kill them all. Yeah, yeah. yeah kill them all. Let God sort them out. That was that was that <laughs> big. That was the strap line. Always on that trick. Uh, powers. Do you give gifts to friends or coworkers at Christmas? And if so, are you buying Dale some pubes this year? Uh, I. <laughs> so what are you, you buying? <laughs> uh, you know, there's not a lot of friends that I buy gifts for, but you two are probably the ones that, uh, well, we do our birthdays every year and we mm. do Christmas as well. And, and I genuinely, you guys are really good gift givers as well. And because there's not that many, like I buy obviously gifts for all of my family, but yeah. like friends wise, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities to like give gifts to your friends <clears throat> at Christmas. Yeah. So I like, I try and step up my game every year. Uh, this year, I so you're quite confident. I went a bit, I went a bit overboard. Okay. I think you've got four gifts. You joke. You've you got do that. You've got three. Four dogs. <laughs> you love dogs, right? <laughs> you've got the multi part. I did joking. a few gifts, but uh, but but small things like a small right. like a little basket of goodies, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. But I just love buying gifts for you guys as well. So I'll see things during the year I buy and I save yeah. it for Christmas. I'm so confident about. Two of you, like I, I think you've got a couple. I'm so confident about one of them, and I've gone down a similar theme for both. Um, but then the other day, because we're basically like we're gonna go for our RKG Christmas uh, lunch and booze, and then karaoke with Ustry and Rich behind the camera as well. Uh, but Rich always buys a, a present, so we were talking. We're like, oh, we should get Rich something. And I remembered, I do. Uh, I bought Rich something from us. We're gonna get something else as well, but I can't tell you what it is because I bought the two of you the same thing. As, as one of your presents, so if we open presents together, and like it's the thing I bought, I think is really good as well. But I, I'm, I, like, I'd much rather give gifts than receive it. I'm a fucking weirdo when it comes to I receiving actually, gifts. I, I don't hate like it. receiving gifts because I hate like even if I really like something, I'm like, yeah. I hope this is being conveyed on my face. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I feel really subconscious. Like, you're like, yeah, I, I yeah. love it. I, I do love it. I love it. I feel I've, like, had, I've had Christmas. With, invariably do and I, I would, I'd yeah. also be immensely grateful for just getting anything yeah well that's it it's I've had Christmas with Clara's friend um, Clara's family uh, twice now and they do this thing where they open one, one, time, no, one present no, each all at the same time, time all the same time like, so my what family the fuck does. is happening and yeah. they're like I'll open it and they'll be like, and they'll be like but like not for like your big presents. I mean for like everything yeah. so like, her mum would be like uh, like I opened up like a pair of like Pac-Man socks hey. and her mum was like this what do you think here you go do you like them and I was like, yeah, they're great. Like, this is good. I was like, I love every present that I've got, genuinely. I'm like, happy to get anything. Yeah, well, That's what we do on Christmas. We have, like, what, who, the leader who's like, okay, the first oh, gift is to Santa. call in. And, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, go through every gift that every person has. And yeah. Oh, absolutely. But with your family, it's fine because it's different. I'd much rather give me, give me my presents yeah. and I'll go sit in a room and then I'll open them all. I'll come out and be like, and I'll guys, stay in there I love, all day. I'll come back down for dinner and then I'll back up again. But I want to watch I'll you open down, everything. I'll get a little yeah. plate of pork pies and I'll go back up and watch Scrooge. <laughs> um, this is for all of us. It says, Would you rather go for a pint with Miyazaki, but you have to call him uh, Michael and lazy all evening, or A.G. Anuma, but you have to call him a wanker once? <laughs> You could cough that, couldn't you? Wanker! What? One of those things I want to do, or one of those things but, I don't yeah, want. But yeah. there might, yeah, there might. If you can't ask him anything else, you just have to call him Lazy Michael all night. That I'm not doing that. I call him Michael. I think I can call him. You no, call him Michael. I'm lazy. Like, no, not lazy. Are we, having, are we having a conversation? <laughs> no, I call him Michael. I can call him Michael. I can't want me to call him Lazy. Or I would make a joke, be like Lazy, and then point at you two, and then be like, Yeah, 
can't can I, get away with it loads. Can I like, do I have to literally say to A.G. Onuma, you are a wanker. No, 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 you, you can call him okay. wanker once. You all got to call him a wanker once. You can get away with that quickly. Oh, I, I, hey, wanker, what do you want for a drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You can quickly like slip it in and yeah. not like. Or, or we're like razzing each other around like, ah, you wanker. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you say that to me? I don't me. know why wanker is in Japanese. Uh, to um, be fair, so, it's, it's, got, it's got to be Miyazaki, but although to controversially, I do think Anuma would be a laugh on a night out. Oh, I'm going. He looks like a laugh. I'm going. Eiji Anuma. Yeah, yeah, he looked like. He, I think. I saw, actually, I, the, we know people who've been to, to parties, parties with, with him. him. Yeah, I was going to say. I've seen him was, in, I went to the Nintendo Nintendo party, party, I seen him in like, yeah. pictures where he's like. He's like just at a, a house party. party. Yeah. yeah. I I, I would have gone home if he turned up to a party I was at. I would have gone home. Really? Yeah. No, you're getting drunk and you're going. No, because I would say something. Yeah, to, right. I can't, there's nothing I can say to that man, yeah. like in person. I just, I just couldn't. I just have to leave. I've, I've been at a party where he was there, but I also, w- I'd be in a lift where it's just been me and him. Oh my um, god! And it was before the very first Zelda anniversary gig, and I was interviewing Zelda Williams, Robin Williams' daughter, <laughs> who was named, Zelda, yeah. named, named after uh, the it's cosplay mate. It's he, not he really used her. to play it together. <laughs> so I, interview, I interviewed uh, Zelda Williams, and I came down the lift, and then he was literally. Getting and the lift going down. Mad. And I was like, this is, I know there's going to be a language barrier, but I was like, I just said like, oh man, I'm really excited for tonight. I absolutely cannot wait. Uh, and he said, he was like, I'm very excited. Uh, we have some surprises. Um, and I was like, okay, cool, whatever. And then he came and played the um, grandma's house theme from Wind Waker Insane. on the piano. He did? Uh, yeah, he played it. So he's like, he came out and like, played, really played it. Yeah. So he came out and played it and then, like everyone was crying. That was the concert with Koji Kondo, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Just the guy who's Co- I think, the most sorry, iconic. Like, I think Kondo, music Kondo was playing it, but oh. he was like, he came out and introduced oh, like Kondo right, playing right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Asia yeah. Numa or Koji Koji Kondo. I, I, I would. I, there's nothing I can say to him. Like he's the Zelda music is some of the most. It's the best. I stand by this. The best he, video game does music he still ever. Write the music in the modern ones. Uh, I think it's it, changed it, it, a little bit. New Breath of the Wild. But um, the incredible thing uh, you'll find, Daniel, about Zelda is the amount of motificism used throughout the franchise, <laughs> yeah. where you'll see uh, riffs and melodies from the older games reincorporated, reincorporated sometimes inverted uh, in modern themes. Yeah. So uh, I still have really my I still have my photos from that event as well, and I think it's like him and Koji Kondo look more like a couple than. And if anything else, they, they don't look like colleagues or anything like that. I think like sitting at the piano while uh, Connor's playing like Grandma's House theme, and they look like it's like their wedding day. It's so cute. It's beautiful. There's the music in. Don't get me started. I'll keep it brief. The music in Zelda is genuinely amazing, and uh, like a little example of the coolest bits of it is if you play Wind Waker, the original island that you start on, which is called Outset Island, mm. uh, you know, has its own completely original theme. But there's uh, certain parts of it where it uses little melodies and riffs from Kokiri Forest yeah. from uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And then you're like subconsciously, you're like, you're like, why does this feel like I've been here? Why does this feel like home? Why does it feel like I've mm. been here before? It's because they're like using little themes from other parts of the games. It's incredible. He's called me Archie. He is, music. He is a wanker. That, yeah. He is a wanker though. So, <laughs> uh, Powers, how would you pronounce my Irish name? And it's spelled N A O I S E. Let me see. Wait, how do I? Let me. Oh, Nisha. Nisha. Nisha, like Sasha. Yeah, like, like Sasha, Sasha Rowan. Rowan. Like I, was thinking, Nisha? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, like Sasha Rowan spelled a bit like that, right? Yeah. Uh, I I have a difficult relationship with a lot of the more interesting spell Irish names. So you say Irish women. One, I have a lot of friends who have names that are spelled in this way, yeah. but also I'm incredibly dyslexic. Uh, which means I can't. And that's not helping you, to be fair. <laughs> that's like, yeah, 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 that is not, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Right, should we listen to how? To... Yeah. Nisha. Nisha. Oh, Ooh, Nisha. Kind of like Sasha, Nisha. Yeah. Ooh, close. Nisha. Man, I know a Nisha. Um, Daniel, what is the destination you'd love to travel to the most? Ooh, um, place I've never been. Um, Korea, I'd like to go to. Yeah. I'd like to go to mainland China. I'd like to go to Shanghai. Same. And then in the place would be Chicago. Oh. There you go. No, nice. Chicago. We, Chicago's come up quite a lot. Yeah, I just think like, I mean, we've, so? we've been looking to Chicago. 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 I'd love to go to Chicago. <laughs> um, I've been to a lot of, like, we've been to a lot of the main cities on the coast, yeah. but like, I guess that's the third city in America in terms of population. It's, yeah. Yeah. 
Let's go to Chicago. Also, I just go to that bridge where Dr. Richard Kimball is in the future. Yes, there you yeah. go. And then maybe we can go to the place where he jumps through the water turbine thing, like in the dam. Oh, like, that'd be sick. Can you do that? You, they should make that. <laughs> <laughs> and also the bit where he dodges the train. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really good. I like that. Uh, Gav, what's the best comic run or series you've ever read? Um, I always think about this with like all of my favorite comic stuff was, and I really got into reading comics in like the early 2000s. Um, where lots of stuff was being like relaunched, um, they had like a huge like redoing of the Marvel stuff. And I only only read Marvel as a kid, basically. Um, but Daredevil was always my favorite superhero, and like Brian Michael Bendis took over Daredevil in like two thousand and in the early two thousands, and then like two thousand and four, there was this one run where it's always my favorite Daredevil thing, and it's always like why I moan about the Daredevil TV show is like. And, and like I think it's like a, a disgruntled FBI agent outs Matt Murdock as Daredevil, and what they have to de- then deal with is what the legal, the literal legal ramifications of Matt Murdock being oh. Daredevil all these years are. And so obviously you have to deal with all the stuff of uh, like all his all his family and friends and stuff knowing, but he doesn't have a lot of those like outwardly, you know. So it was like, can he still do his job as a lawyer? Even though everybody knows that he's Daredevil, and like it's more about the logistics of the problem, yeah, and it's all logistics like, stuff like that. But like, I re- I loved that storyline because it was like this is a really clever way of doing it. Yeah. There's the, like there's a really I think there's a really famous cover which is like because you know they have people like coming into those things all the time. But there's really famous cover was like Daredevil, and it was all those covers were like really lovely like hand painted ones. Because mm-hmm. the guy who did the art was Alex Malieve. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he did the covers, but I yeah, don't. They were like I think he did. I think he's, yeah. he's the thing was like with Malieve. I think he did like everything. Mm-hmm. So it was rather than have like multiple things, um, but there's that one famous cover where like Spider Man's like holding his shoulder, um, which is really good because like Spider Man's like I've had to do like this is why it's my worst nightmare yeah, basically, don't tell and me you're why. and you're don't going through it right now. Why. To be fair, I've yeah. seen a few uh, superhero movies recently where I'm like, can you cut some of this fighting and just have yeah. a bit of chat? I think that like... that's why I really didn't like the Netflix Daredevil. I thought it was boring. I was just like, just constantly him fighting people in dark alleys. And I was like... Wait, the Netflix series? Yeah. Oh, no, it was banging. It was great. The hallway scene? That big fight? <laughs> yeah. I like that, that in the first fight. series. <laughs> then yeah. the rest of it is like just him outside a building all fighting yeah. somewhere. I don't really like it. I know what you but, mean, yeah. It needs but I quite like that, like having to deal with the logistics of it, which is kind of good. And like She-Hulk kind of went there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know, the um, law side of things. I thought it was quite good. Um, Daniel, sorry for the cheeky three in one question. If you could only have one type of crisp chocolate bar and soft drink for the rest of your life, what would it be? Much love, Gaz. I just have a simple Diet Coke. No DC. Oh, one of each. One of each, I think. Oh, yeah, was yeah, yeah. Crisps? Crisp? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, fuck. Uh, salt and vinegar McCoys. I once had a Solid pa- I once had a pack of them that was so strong it chemically burnt my mouth. I've said that before, <laughs> but they, I do think about that quite often. Yeah. And every time I have a new fresh pack, I'm like, I'm dicing with death here. So uh, Diet Coke. Uh, some some of them, I don't know whether they exacerbate each other on a chemical level. Mm. And then oh, third yeah. one, chocolate bar. What did I say earlier? I think it was just going to go like forever. Yeah. Honestly, just just a Mars bar. Yeah. I like a Mars bar. A Mars bar? What were you saying? I'm gonna go, go say something. I'm gonna say a boost. Oh, it's boost. I'll take a ah, boost. Didn't ask you, didn't <laughs> <laughs> you already said Fucking that. Fucking have one then. <laughs> if you want. Powers. Powers so What's your favorite Zelda game and why? It's very chocolate. Uh, uh, I can't. Answer, I can't answer this question. I just. I simply can't do it. But I do have. A, I have. I do have a. Top. Right now, what's your favorite Zelda game? Yeah. I can't. Tw- I'll say Twilight Princess. Twilight okay. Princess is. Ooh. I want to say Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Well, so yeah. right, Daniel, you give me a bit more options. Uh, but Twilight Princess is glass, man. Like people don't give that enough. I feel like it. people don't talk about it. They took a real swing there, mm. and at a time at, at, during my formative years as a young adult, uh, playing a Zelda game that was tackling a lot more serious uh, mm. tones was it, was really inside. into me. It was some good shit. But I also love Majora's Mask. Yeah. And Ocarina of Time. And Wind Waker. And Breath of the Wild. Here's a controversial one. Uh, yeah. A Sky, Skyward Sword, I think, is the only Zelda game I've played that I just straight up borderline didn't like. Oh, I thought it was, I I thought it was a bad that. game. I just thought it was a bad game. I like it. Also, didn't enjoy, well, Breath of the Wild, I have a complicated relationship. Things with. it was really? one of the, Yeah. Do you like Breath of the Wild? I, I well, thought, too odd. I think it is, a, this is how I've condensed the argument. I think Breath of the Wild is an incredible game. Mm. I don't think it's a good Zelda game. 
And that's how I've made peace. You, with you it. like what you like, don't you, mate? Yeah. I, I think it, I don't think it is. I had a lot of fun playing it, but by the end, I was like, that could have been anything. I don't feel like I was necessarily closer to the Zelda universe. The temples weren't really that unique. It was all just kind of the same vibes in every one. The things I love about that franchise weren't really represented like in that game. So. Shots, shots, fired! Oh, so it's all shots, shots, fired! Yeah. 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 Three yeah. Yeah. people that's listening to this pipes. are going to be like, "Finally, yeah. someone's saying that's it." That's two pints. That is yeah. cool. yeah. I just didn't like last Zelda. Yeah. Well, wait till I have my third pint. Yeah. Oh, again, a Link's crossbow adventure <laughs> shit, isn't it? What were they thinking there? This is for all of us. How do you feel about Carl Pilkington? As an American, I think he's the funniest person alive, but I haven't met a single person from the UK that finds him too appealing. I don't know why that is. And they should, I've never seen any of these TV shows. I think it's fine. I think the, the shtick grows old quite fast with me. Um, but I, quite, I, I quite, think it's funny. I quite liked a lot of Idiot of Broad for a bit. Because like, listen to him on that podcast, and the podcast is amazing because it's just silly. And we he's all listen to that. Right? Yeah. It is not, it's not. I think, no, it I think is, he's yeah. a real person, yeah. But then, yeah, I think like a lot of the um, TV show stuff, it was like, I don't know, a lot of the stuff, particularly like going around Asia and things like that, like he's just sort of taking the piss out of customs that, yeah, might be quite odd and food that, yeah, that might be quite odd for someone who's never eaten anything other than like lasagna and chips. But I don't <laughs> right. know, some of it is just like, I don't know if I can watch six hour long episodes of this with someone going, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Mm. But also being quite rude about it as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So. Fine, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think like it's one of those things where I don't, don't think he even wanted to make those things, but I think he just got quite a lot of money to do yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Um, Powers, least favorite Zelda game and why? <laughs> oh, all right. Maybe oh, here I, we go. I think I jumped the gun a little bit there. Yeah. Um, uh, I think there's still a few that I haven't played, but from the ones that I have played, I'd probably say Skyward Sword, mm. least favorite Zelda game. They did some cool stuff in that game, but um, they, there was also a lot of bad stuff. I really yeah. liked it, but I think they did a lot of this stuff. It was just after the sort of Wii Pro controller come out. Yeah. And for some reason, I just, my, whatever my setup was, did not like that. Did yeah. not like that, that, that controller at all. And like, you had to like hold it like up, basically like a sword. And it was very, cut lot, things yeah. in certain directions. But also, you didn't really go anywhere. Like, even you went to three different locations, visited on the back of your bird. And then when like the world shifted, you just went back to those three locations. Yeah. Was, you, you end up fighting the same boss something like five times or something ridiculous. It yeah. just was a bit of a weird game and yeah, wasn't vibing with it. Daniel, of any sport in the world, what would you want to go pro in? Uh, and what team would you like to play for in that sport? Just probably just snooker. Snooker. I just play for myself. <laughs> yeah, just like good life. Know, it's a good life. Good life. Yeah, it gets it down quite a lot for a yeah. sport, which I really love. Yeah, um, I think you'd drive a dart. Good money. Good money as you, well. In really the good money. You could be really. You'd be really famous to a certain group of people, but you could walk down the street. Yeah, it's the very few sports where you can also have a pint while doing it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if the pros do, but. I mean, they used to. Ronnie Sullivan, like uh, uh, back in the day. I've played before, haven't Yeah, <laughs> having, a, having a cigarette, like putting your cigarette on the table yeah. while you go. Like, but I feel like it's one of those things where to a certain people, you are the most famous person in the world. Yeah. But, but you have out, a out about, about Yeah. I mean, you go on holiday in America or Japan, no one's knowing who you are. Yeah, exactly. Really. You yeah. don't really get recognized as oh, Ronnie the Rocket O'Sullivan. <laughs> I think that's good. I, you almost like dictate your own thing as well, because like sometimes he doesn't play for yeah. a bit, and then sometimes he'll come back and he'll play for a bit. Yeah. Like I do a little one four seven with the Crucible. I like that. I think that's a, I think that's a good answer. Yeah. I think it's yeah, a really good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's not the stress of being like. Premier League football. I played for England. That's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's a lot of stress. Like, that is it's too much for me. I'm yeah. just sitting down. Do you get to do? That's the thing. Is like with this with this new play as well. It's like who's going to be annoyed at you? Yourself. And I'm that happens anyway. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah. I'm I'm up for that. I think that's great. Yeah, this is for me. It says Gav. What was your favorite memory from the World Cup? Um, and which teams fans did you have the most fun with? Um, Fans and speaking to people from different all over the world was my favorite thing um, because it was all in the one city you got to go around. Like, I saw even like the map today, I saw of someone had put, like, look at how many cities the next World Cup is going to be in. And while that is really cool, you are going to have to travel around quite a lot. Whereas this, it felt like a music festival, it felt like everyone was doing the same thing. And you get it felt like it wasn't just the people who happened to be around that 
stadium. It was like everybody was around, and I think like yeah. that was the coolest thing about it. It was like I think I met I met someone from every single team that's in this. There's 32 teams in there, 31 you know counting Wales. So, although we met a lot of Welsh people, um, <laughs> but I met someone from every other country and more. And like that was the coolest thing, man. Like because everybody had a story about how they were there and like yeah, what games yeah. they'd seen and things like that. Like I met I met one guy who'd been to 10 different World Cups. I met another guy from the Netherlands who'd been to nine World Cups. Um, oh my God! Like, and it was just bonkers, man. Like, that was the coolest thing. Is to be fair, going to the World Cup is a good excuse to just go somewhere, like go to a new country mm. and have like a kind of weird experience out there. Yeah. You know? So that would be, that'd be fun. that's the th- that's the thing. That was definitely the whole thing because like it was awesome all being in one place. Like, as much as I would love to go, even if Wales didn't qualify for the next World Cup, I'd love to go to that World Cup. I do think it's gonna be a comp- it will be a completely different experience. Where is it next? Uh, America, Canada, Mexico. Wow! Oh my yeah. gosh! Oh yeah, um, that's gonna be wild. Like, and it's, it's, yeah, it's cool. It's one. It's some. It's like some games in Atlanta and things like that. But I guess like how they divvy up those games. I guess I don't know. If, do they move people around during group games? Probably yeah, not. So you'd be like, separate, yeah, like whereas possible because that's unnecessary travel. Yeah. yeah. So like that. So that would be two groups that are based in Mexico, which I think like that is cool. But then at the same time, if you were based in LA and you're not gonna get to see the people who were based in Atlanta. Like, I think. Thing is, there's very other places that could replicate the Doha situation because no other yeah. city is going to build eight no, stadiums no, around it. Yeah. So it's almost yeah. like a weird yeah. one-off thing. Yeah, because no other country could even replicate that. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think like, but I think that was the thing that lots of people who've been to lots of World Cups were saying was one of the good things about this place is get just to meet so many different people. Yeah. Like that was really cool. I think yeah, definitely all all the different people I got to meet. Uh, Daniel, if you were cooking a meal. Uh, for a date or a friend for the first time, what would be your go-to and why? Well, uh, I think I would cook, I, oh, that's a good question. You want something that's not going to be a massive stress, but that is both delicious and impressive. Mm. Uh, I can make a really good green Thai curry from scratch, make the paste and everything. Ooh. That's pretty good. But once that's cooking, you could you like chat and stuff, yeah. and then it's still good and that's a good impressive. Point, yeah. So you don't want something that's going to be like very fine timings when your guest is there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. a lot of the timings of that is like it's a lot of prep work you can do before they arrive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd say something like that. Yeah. Because then you're just then plating. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Powers is it an extreme sport like skydiving, snowboarding, etc. That you would like to try in 2023. Well, you did it with snowboarding. Snowboarding was my big one for this year. Yeah. Um, I I'm, I'm kind of. Freaking in, I'm getting into extreme sports. Yeah. Like, like I only got into surfing in the last like few years. Loved it. I've been skateboarding my my whole life. Tried mm. snowboarding. Loved it. I don't know what the next step is from that. Strapping yourself to a firework. Maybe <laughs> yeah, go straight to that. That's the end game. Pretty sure. But I don't know. I want to do a lot more snowboarding. I think this year. Yeah. And then maybe escalating towards those wingsuits where you just jump oh, yeah. off a shit and spread your I arms. Mean, I mean, like, we're all built like wingsuits. Yeah. Yeah. Wings. Literally a leap. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's many. There's not many more extreme sports that I'd be interested in. Chainsaw like, juggling. Well, I don't. What else is there? Downhill cycling. Yeah, like, like extreme. Down- not really doing anything for me. Yeah. Surf, uh, surf, skate, snowboarding. Those are the three. Rapids, that I love. like river rapids. Yeah. Like, uh, like stream Again, kayaking. Yeah, yeah. Maybe skydiving. I would like to free skydive. Free climbing? I'd love, I'd love to go skydiving, <laughs> like, yeah. Free climbing is pretty extreme. We should see if you... we can beat Dark Souls in the air. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> jump out with a switch. See if we can get to the first boss and beat it before we hit the ground. Oh, my bad. It's yeah, it's something, yeah. It's something, yeah. Um, this is one for all of us. Is I'm staying with my girlfriend's family for the first time for two weeks for Christmas. I've only met them once before. I've never gone anywhere else than my family's house for Christmas before, and I'm kind of nervous about it. Do you have any do's or don'ts or things to avoid when you're um, when you're staying with somebody else for Christmas? I've done I've done this a couple of times. The last like because of lockdowns and Coco was ill one year. I've done two different Christmas with Clara's families now, and the thing that you realize is I think everybody's family is different at Christmas and everybody has a different routine yeah. and everyone does like we do Christmas we do presents in the morning Clara's is, um, sorry after dinner Clara's parents do uh, presents straight away Christmas af- presents after dinner yeah, yeah yeah so we have Christmas lunch and then we do a thing we do our stockings in the morning that must be then we have food, lunch when you're a kid yeah like, wait, so you have oh, to no, no, wait no. until dinner Not, this is only now, now oh, as adults right, yeah right. when we were a kid we did it all in the morning but okay. now as adults we kind of like do our stockings then we have lunch and then we do Civilized. our presents after, yeah. yeah. Civilized. I can um, wait for my presents. Yeah. yeah but I think but like Clara's parents also don't have dinner till really, really late as well. How Whereas late? like 
Well, like we had dinner like six o'clock. Wow. So like, yeah. Like, like dinner time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a proper big dinner, and that's the sort of. Are you not starving the by day. then? No, no but you kind of like eat eating the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're it's not like a like Christmas <laughs> fast. <laughs> what kind of sick little Christmas is this? It's not it's it's no dinner. dinner. Like, I have like a Christmas lunch. We have yeah. about two or three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. But okay, like, yeah. But like, I like they you're just like, that's the only thing you're allowed to have. Um, or also just like it's like hey you just got respect to the family yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, you're allowed to eat you're a madman you're allowed to you're eat a madman. Um, I think like that's why I would I say is be like isn't it? Uh, embrace it go along with it like yeah go along with other people don't be Jeremy's like dad yeah, yeah essentially yeah um, I think it's really good but also what I think would be quite nice is if there is something about what you do in your Christmas thing in your Christmas traditions that they don't do, but you'd be like, oh, this could be kind of cool, actually. And like, so maybe yeah, something silly, in. or maybe there's a certain game or something like that. You can go, oh, we do always do that, but also at the same time, not getting angry with it. Maybe they're not up for it as well. That's um, good advice. Which I think is solid. Good Powers, having spent time in Canada, did you get much to travel around? And if so, do you have a favorite place you visited in Canada? Uh, I've been to to uh, Canada a few times now. Granted, it's always been Toronto, and I haven't gone too far outside of Toronto, uh, except for, of course, going down to visit Niagara Falls. Mm. But honestly, Toronto is one of my favorite cities in the world. There's a reason I don't it's really go that far when I when I go visit, because it's incredible. Like, that's where all my friends are. Amazing place, amazing vibes, amazing food and bars. Um, I would like to explore more of the north, south, east, west side of Canada, yeah, because um, I've only ever gone to the east side before, so mm. maybe something for next year. But I'm Go loving Vancouver. Toronto. Love it. Yeah, Vancouver. Daniel, where does Elden Ring rank in your personal Soulsborne list? Oh, he's, 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 he's right up there. But then I think they have a lot of parity. Like, yeah. like I can't really draw much between Dark Souls and Bloodborne. I think yeah. Elden Ring is around there. I mean, yeah. three masterpieces, right? Like. If you had to. Fossil 3. If you Fossil had to. Uh, There's a gun Sekiro's to your head. one below. I don't know. It's right up there with anything they've ever made, I think. Okay. Where's Sekiro for you? Is it? I think it's just one below, just because in terms of scope and huh. what it does and story, it's not, I don't think it's as fulfilled or like as involved as the other stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this question for me says, uh, should I shave my beard? I've had it since the beginning of the COVID shutdowns and kept it because it made me laugh. I don't <laughs> laugh at it anymore. It has become normal. Oh. I, think, I think it was become it it, quite sad. That yeah, time. I don't <laughs> laugh at it anymore. I don't <laughs> laugh with him. It's not bringing you joy. Is yeah. it a thing that you should have in your life? Uh, it has just become normal to him. But that's that's good. We were talking about it earlier. It was like yeah. you saying like it be, my mustache has become right. normal to you now. Yeah. You look at pictures of me with a beard, and you're that's like, okay. that's weird. I don't laugh at my legs, but I want them. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't like that. Shouldn't be the reason. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Does it look good on you? That's yeah, the question. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to laugh at it. If, I think if you're, whatever makes you happy to do it. I think a lot of people did, during all the lockdowns and stuff, did go for something different. But I think if you also... Let's grow a pack. If you send me, also, if you tweet me a picture of you in a beard, I'll tell you if you look good or not. In like, a heartbeat. Because we're not I'll invested tell. in it. We yeah, absolutely. If you can grow yeah. a beard, you know you can grow it back, right? Yeah. Like, Although I guess like some people will grow it and be like, oh, this is my beard. And you're like, when? Right. You yeah. shaved it off. There should, oh. be a, there should be a website. Maybe this is a business we should form. Just yeah. called. Uh, do just I called, look good? Uh, opi- yeah. Do I look good? Yeah. Or opinions.com or something mm. like that, where you can like ask a question, upload a picture, and just strangers will give you. Well, very I think Reddit does head. a lot of that, but I don't think there's very nice people on Reddit. Is the problem? Yeah, so, you need to yeah. make sure it's it's a, it's a people who are not just there to roast people. It's, yeah. Because sometimes I just want to be like like I'm sure you guys steer me right multiple times, mm. but also someone just be like that's a bad haircut. Well, don't don't get that here. There's those um, and I did it for uh, a work thing for Ask Man, but there was like those um, companies where you put in the kind of clothes that you want to be wearing that yeah. you don't wear, and they'll send you like a box every month. And the idea was is like I would take a photo of myself in it and send it to the guy. And then the guy who was my personal stylist for that month would be like, oh no, like this doesn't work for you, this doesn't work for you, this doesn't work for you. And I kind of like that, but then also they do work for that company. So they're never going to go, fuck, I fucked this up, mate. You look, <laughs> yeah. you, you look terrible. Like, but yeah, I, I, know I did get mean. a feeling that he was being pretty honest, yeah, like being yeah. like, okay, well, if you like that, then keep it. But personally, I would go blah, 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 blah. So those, those kind of exist. But yeah, if send, DM me if you want a picture of your uh, mustache. And I'll tell you if it looks what good or not. Um, there you go. Uh, Kruber says, "Do you think we'll ever do? Uh, you'll do a series like Games Are Good for You again?" 
Uh, possibly. Like, I don't think we have any time on the immediate schedule because we're quite busy for the next year. But mm. I think we would like to, but I don't think it's on the plan. Yeah, that was a kind of the, like the idea when we were coming up with that was like something that we were doing for that particular project. We'd be in like, actually, something that we would, if we wanted to, we could do more of. Because yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, we I came mean, up with the I idea mean, as the show, as a show. Yeah, like, I think there's lots of other things you could talk about with yeah. that broader concept. Are games good for you? Like, you could talk about physical benefits rather than just like mental health benefits. Yeah. There's lots of other things you could talk about, whether they're educationally useful. Yeah. There's lots of different perspectives that you could approach that banner with. Yeah. Um, the physical one is great because there's so many like kind of exercise issues, yeah. 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 Or ones, people, yeah, with like, physical disabilities, like, it helps. I think there's yeah. lots of ways you could tackle that concept. This is not immediately a thing that we're um, researching. Yeah. Sure. Powers, you are the only person in the world with a superpower. What would it be? Uh, I'd quite like to, you know, the, the easiest option is maybe teleport because that would be fun. I have family all over the world. It'd be very nice to see them. Teleporting, though, doesn't really seem like a laugh. So maybe being able to fly. Because tele teleport is just like, look at me, boop, I'm over here now. Hey, boop, I'm over here. Yeah. But if I could fly, you know. But you still want the downtime of the flying, but you'd be like unbelievably fast. Yeah, I think that's what I want to. I want to be able to fly unbelievably fast. Okay. Because that would be, because then like. So how long would you want to be able to get to LA in? Oh, an hour. So you still would do an hour. You still, still do, do an, an hour. hour. Still take an hour, hour flying. Though. But think how fast that would be. You'd be going. Yeah, but like if you're in a super, you could be in a second. An hour. It's still an hour. You can't be like you yeah, can't be switched. Also, you're flying. It's great. It's you know where you're going though. I'm like, you know, going with the yeah, birds. Like, you're going to see <laughs> shit. If you've got to go from London to LA in an hour, yeah. that's going to be so sped up. But you've like, got, you're, you're, like, you've got you're not going to see. You've got to keep track of where you're going. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But what if I if I if I can get there in like five minutes? I'll go straight through a plane. That's way too fast. You wouldn't be able to get there an hour if you're not watching where you go. You go for yeah. Yeah. That's still going to be really quick. As faster than any. All right, fifteen I minutes. 15 I don't think it's going to be as chill minutes. as you think it is going to be. Like you're like, yeah, I can still. I'll read a bit of a book, check my text That's and stuff, it. and then I'm there. Like, oh, what movies they got on? I'm in Australia. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'll Hannah, I'll be late. I'm going to be very late. Uh, yeah, fly. I'll say fly. Uh, this is one for all of us. Says, hey boys, I'm going to my first download next year and super excited. I uh, was curious if you guys attended any festivals on the reg and what your favourite ones are. Love from Jake. We went to Drownload. Went to download. Yeah, we did. Is that what you, that's what they uh, call that it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like download is a, is a funny one because it's always incredible. It's like the heaviest lineup that you can have. It's like it's pretty heavy sort of rock and heavy metal, but generally some of the nicest people I think yeah. in the world in in the world of music go to that. I think and there's no pretense or anything. Everyone is there to have a good time and drink. It's, a, it's a, quite a boozy festival. It wasn't um, we were there, yeah. let me tell you. It's a very Jesus boozy festival. Um, I went this year and was really lucky that it was like, with the weather, it was like basically the exact opposite. Uh, it was like boiling and dry. My um, God. Uh, so that was really good. But it's funny seeing goths in the sun. Well, that's quite fun. Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I've been down, like I used to go to this one that was amazing um, festival, it was called, on, and it was on the Isle of Wight. Uh, and it was oh, yeah. curated by Rob the Bank, who was like a Radio 1 DJ for a bit. But that was just always really good fun because um, it was all based around fancy dress as well. So on the Saturday, the whole thing would have a theme. So like, but a quite loose theme was like under the sea, space and things like that. And then basically all weekend people would do it. But definitely on the Saturday was the big dressing up day and people would really go all out for That's their costumes. That's a great idea. I wish yeah. more festivals did that. Anything. Anything, so anything based on around that theme, basically. So they did one that was like one year where they did where it was like um, pop stars and stuff, and then you could dress that. They did one that was just like um, uh, animals. They did animals as well. I dressed up as Fantastic Mr. Fox for that one. But for like um, the Space Age one, we dressed up as the Beastie Boys in the Intergalactic video, um, which is really really cheap to do, and we were really skinned, so it had to be. But also it had the function of because we were basically wearing white overalls, we could uh, basically hide loads of booze. In the overalls, so like we're walking through, pretend to be robots, but because we had to walk like that, <laughs> because because we it had counts. like it cans, or it was like two liter bottles well, of seven tiskies, vod vodka Red Bull, just st uh, taped to our arms, and they're like, oh look, they're doing the another dimension, another dimension. Like that's yeah, how yeah, people yeah. learn the robot. Absolutely, yeah. it's like a training aid. It's like stabilizing wheels. Yeah, you, know, you take them out and you can still do the robot. I love that. Just clinking, 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 clinking. Yeah. 
That, that, was, that was always one of my favorite ones, man. Like, and but it was also like I, I'm not talking about some of this some of the other day. It was like it was the one that I got lost the most at, and it was just like before phones. Were great. <laughs> it was an island. Like, yeah, lots of times it was like you be like, well, there's no signal on the entire thing, or you get signal for like two seconds. So we used to have like a proper meeting point if we got lost. I remember just <laughs> we like flare guns. We were all just like standing like now and again at different parts of the thing, being like when you saw someone. That you hadn't seen, and you like, you might not have seen your friends for like two hours, and then you happened upon the bit, and you're like, oh my god, this is the happiest moment of my life. Seeing two spacemen yeah. reunited <laughs> in the middle of a festival yeah. must have been the weirdest thing. Oh my We're god! Like, oh my god! But <laughs> the funny, we thought we were the we thought we were the most original people ever. And then it was loads of Beastie Boys. So it was like you couldn't even go like, are you seeing any Beastie Boys around? <laughs> <laughs> um, Powers, who's your pick to win the Super Bowl this year? Someone asked me this uh, the other day. I've got no goddamn clue. Let me tell you. I've been focusing basically just on the Falcons and my own fantasy team. And Minnesota, mate. You and love Minnesota, Minnesota, to be fair. Season, yeah. You know what? I'd love Minnesota. Or yeah. the Dolphins. Are they doing good? Doing all right, yeah. Dolphins or Minnesota. I mean, obviously Falcons. I'd love the Falcons. Well, the Eagles were the first team to book their place outright in the playoffs. Wow. And that, that hasn't happened for years. So That's insane. What, the the Eagles doing like good? It's been amazing, yeah. Jesus. Been really, really, really right. good. Well, I, think, Eagles. <laughs> Eagles. Yeah. I think at the beginning of the year, it was like the uh, Bills and Kansas City were like the the thing. And Bills is doing really good. But both those teams are doing really good. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah. You know, what? I'd love uh, Vikings to to make it this I year. I would. That would be incredible. Love Vikings to win the Super Bowl. Fantastic. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I would absolutely love it. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, Daniel, now that you and Gav have done definitive companion on Jonathan Creek and Halloween, uh, what would you want to do next? Coronation Street. Coronation Street. Every episode. Every episode. All like four thousand of them. I bet there's a Coronation Street podcast that is. Doing I, I ultimately, I just like to start a project that I know I'll die before I finish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coron- Coronation Street. There's got to be Coronation Street podcasts. But whether or not they're watching, I don't. Know, I don't. I, don't so I, I genuinely don't think it's probably impossible to watch every episode. Easily. I don't think they're all archived. That's the one we're going to man. Isn't it? So it was, uh, it's, yeah. How many <laughs> episodes are there? Do one of them a week. <laughs> it will take 200 years to do. That can't be right. How many episodes? Are, uh, well, how many do you think there are, right? I'd say uh, there's probably like 4,000 episodes. What do you think? I have no clue. So well, Coronation Street. It went four times a week in 1998. It went yeah. four yeah. times a week? Well, it so it's been be. running from 1960 to 2014. There are 10,822 episodes of Coronation okay. Street. One a week? <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> Till the end of time. If you don't know what Coronation Street is, uh, to be fair, Google it and then you'll find out. But it's Wait, like if we do one a week, is that 2,000 years? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's like, that's the thing, because yeah. like, we need to like, strip the highway around. Uh, they must, that's what, you know what I'm saying? Like, there must be a... a a Coronation Street podcast. 10,000 episodes? It's That's got to be now and then they do like, oh, we'll do a classic episode now and again. That's insane. Uh, we're not going to do a, a Coronation Street podcast. People think One Piece is bad. That's nuts. Yeah, I mean, that just doesn't stop. Does People it? in Japan are going, you haven't got One Piece. What about your fucking Coronation? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true, I see, yeah. Uh, it's for me, it says, I'm all just like here, but I only started listening to Shield up about three months ago. Uh, my question is, you talk about Mad Men a lot on all of your content. As someone who's never seen it and only has your content as a reference, why should I watch it over the shows in this golden age of TV? I think that the way that it presents characters and story is generally unique and more fun than a lot of like the big ones. Like I'm watching, rewatching Breaking Bad at the minute, and while I do think that is good, that is very much just every episode constant action and constant peril and people just not having a good time. Whereas in Mad Men, even though the main character, you kind of forget about him for a bit, but like the, the supporting characters in Mad Men are so funny. And I do think it is secretly one of the funnier shows ever. Just having like old people in that time talking to young people who, uh, young people in like, you know, the 1950s and 60s, were uh, something that people had never seen and like the way they talked about music and the way they talked about culture and I think I really love seeing the old people interact with young people in that in that way I think it's really good but I, I do just think like there's some bits in it in, in similar to Sopranos you know there's things that happen like early on that you think it's just a small little throwaway thing and then come back to be this huge thing um, and they do that in a really good way without 
it just everyone's having a rough time all the time. Even but though it's a show that prioritizes character over plot. Yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah. like a lot of people existing rather than doing. Yes. Whereas like right. it's like events yeah. and stuff happening, yeah. and you find out through characters through moments of like big things. Yeah, definitely. It's, like, it's a little bit more deft, isn't it? And they do. They also do like a lot of a lot, like in Sopranos, a lot of it does get moved on quite a lot but you're kind of looking at the same thing happening all the time i don't think it makes like any sh like huge you like they they've just written this incredible world and you're living in this world in almost real time whereas in like madman like stuff gets moved along and huge things happen i can't don't want to say them but like the mo propel these characters forward either in time or themselves like purposely i think it's just fantastic the way it does that i don't know it's just always i also just love the set and it just looks there's stuff you watch now, even like full films and stuff, which have these amazing budgets that are set in the 50s and 60s, and they look like shit. Yeah, the production yeah. design is pretty stellar. It's fantastic on it. Um, there was a thing that was just happened as I moved to IGN as well, where it was just about to end, where they auctioned off all the sets, and they auctioned off everything in the Mad Men thing, but it was all like really expensive. And I just wish I that bet. I wish that I'd known it was coming for years yeah. and I could have gone like yeah. I would have loved recreate, to like his office. Yeah. It must have been something tiny. You could have got like a pen or something from oh, the Honestly, office. even that stuff was just going for ridiculous amounts of money. Um that I would have liked to have done. But yeah, I think there's there's probably people who've just bought his oh, entire yeah, office. Oh yeah, like, like recreated a section of it. Um it's like I, anytime I listen to it's really fun as well because when I listen to like those actors on any other podcast, you see interviews with them and like some of them gone on to do amazing things and like arguably bigger things than Mad Men. But anytime they talk about Mad Men, it's like you can see like the little glint come in yeah, their eye and they're like and, you know, there's some people who are like, I don't think I'll ever have it as good as that ever again, which is I think is fantastic. Um Wow. I was telling Gav, I forgot the fucking holiday penguin. penguin. He could have been what in there. Well, no, I didn't bring him to this deliberately. You, we could have burned him. He's coming to. Not, I can keep it away from you. You and penguins. Why, when, when are you going to bring him? It's tomorrow. Christmas party. Tomorrow. He's going to have to come oh, to yeah, Christmas. Christmas. Nah, the R1, R1. Which that, that means you're the last chance to remember it, so you don't bring it. I, I'll go home. I will go Cheers, home. Is it oh, no, 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 the giant one. The giant, yeah, giant one. Yeah. He's dead. That's probably not that allowed. That's that a dead one. It's destroyed. Completely destroyed. Cheers. Two fools. Last chance to go for it, guys. I'll go for it for this last one. <laughs> we actually do this now. Yeah, go on. Someone's got to get it. Oh, way off it. Way off it. Way yeah, off it. Same. Completely undershot that. No, all rubbish. Really? Yeah. All Christmas is no, it. They don't. I can't see. You're so. on the G. Bro, come on, look at that. You, like... I've basically got it. No, you have got it. Wait, it, I mean, it depends where you put it on the table. Right. Well, it's fine. That's okay. If you can find a place, it's fine. Yeah. Christmas is not cancelled. I'll find a place go, where yeah. mine works. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right, this is the last question before we go on to uh, lots of Mingin or Fair plays. This is for all of us. It says, um, from, an outside, from an outside perspective, you seem really established now as RKG. Is there any lingering fear about all going belly up? <laughs> <laughs> Leave you in my dreams. <laughs> I mean, that's just like any business ever. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's like um, my cousin's partner, because like obviously what we do is quite uh, it's different than like a Sex. lot of kind of jobs. Yeah. And she kind of just said, "Oh, what if this X Y Z?" But I was just like, "That's like any job. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can lose any job. Any job can go wrong. You get fired from any company. Yeah, yeah. And they they luckily work for the civil service, which is like a job you can have kind of for life. Job for life, mate. Job for life. Well, the government isn't going under. <coughs> Yeah. as a concept yeah. but it's like what you describe is just any job yeah, yeah that's any true. type of employment but no also like you know RKG has the benefit of being uh, wicked wicked <laughs> sick um, cool fun uh, but flexible as well. Yeah. Like it kind of like ebbs and flows where it's like, it's like maybe let's we'll, try we'll this for a bit. With yeah. Yeah. We'll do different types of content. That's exactly. We'll review commodes one day. I think as long, as long as we're, like the thing is, like, as long as we're trying new things that we, also that we want to try, we're not trying them for the sake of doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. in the time that we've started, like, like live streaming has become this huge thing, which uh, like is seen as the thing to do. I don't really want to do that. It's so, big if you want to be a streamer. Yeah, absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, and we do it now and again, but like for the events we want to do mm. it for, you know? It's yeah. just not as good. It's just like, I just love making a show. Like, I love doing that. And I think the people who are into that thing seem to be into it right now. And I think as, if we can still keep making really good things as they start getting older. But we've said this a million times, and I think this is a really interesting thing, is we're the first generation to be doing this. Mm. So 
we don't know what being 50 and doing this is like. We don't know what being 60 yeah. is doing like. Do you know what I mean? And I think we do, we're really lucky that we do it. We get to do it in a way that isn't dictated too much by other places. Like you know, you don't see you or I doing this like all the time and yeah. stuff like that because people think I do that it that's the way that you do it. Not quite a lot. Not well, often. Though, a lot of but... shit just shocks me. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. How much was this part? Do you know what I mean? It's like we don't have to do a lot. We don't have to do a lot of stuff that we don't want to do. And I yeah. think that is paramount. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, if, yeah, if we had to go back and do, yeah, I don't, I don't fancy doing that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, oh, you you meant to be afraid, like uh, to to a degree. Like I don't think it, not to a point where it's debilitating, but I think you want to be, you want to feel comfortable. I never feel yeah. comfortable. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'd rather it fail and I was doing what I want than it succeed and I was doing something I didn't like doing. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What yeah. about succeed wildly, but you doing something you? What if what if you were a cajillionaire? But you were doing something you I've didn't sold want to my do. soul. Yeah. Oh, cajillionaire though. Cajillion. That's quite a bit. That Ten is quite cajillions. A bit. The thing with and if, a, a if video. you had cajillion, you could buy integrity. That's, <laughs> yeah. you could That's buy true. Yeah, yeah. I'm buying all the world's most famous paintings and making jigsaws. So, ah, uh, he's bought Twitter again. <laughs> I will Twitter. I don't know what. I'll sell Twitter to you. And I'll, buy Twitter back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll give you one Instagram. And you can do one Twitter. We'll make a video about it. <laughs> and I've, I've, I've renamed it Croupagram. <laughs> and you have it. to use it. You I'm signing up. It. I'm signing up. A cajillion, that is yeah. a lot. That's one creeps. Well, there we go. I think that's, that's a nice one to end the normal questions on. Um, yeah. Are you ready for some of the most minging or minging of fair plays we've ever In my got? head, this is like just like a latrine gauntlet. Yeah. Muck. I'm ready. I'm so ready. So here we go. This is a nice one, though. It says, hey, guys. I'm actually the original Ming and Minger. Fit, Ming and Fit <laughs> player, yeah, the original Minger. I wrote, I wrote into you about drinking those unop- unopened bottled of beers I found in a field. Um, <laughs> I'm dead uh, now. Claims of yeah. <laughs> I'm an on and off patron, supporting you guys whenever I have the money and time to do so. And it always makes me laugh when I return to Shield up to hear Ming and Fit play. It's still going strong. So here's a new one for you. During the great toilet paper shortage of COVID-19, when supplies were running dangerously low, after wiping my ass, I started folding the paper over on itself so the poo was contained within, and then wiping again with the clean, unused side. Essentially, my toilet paper usage was cut in half, and so I continue this habit now. Things are back to normal. To clarify, the poo never comes back into contact with my ass, neither do I have to touch it, so fair play, yeah. Uh, uh, Although I am technically reusing toilet paper, which is Ming and went out loud, so Ming and fair play. Uh, P.S. I am wiping whilst writing this. Love you, boys, from Joe W. I do this anyway. I do yeah, that. I yeah. thought that's how you meant to wipe your ass. That's just an efficient I, use of I, toilet paper, I, yeah. Environmentalism is not minging. So like, I, I'm glad you said that because I, I, for a second there, I was like about to put my hand up and I was like, I thought that was just wiping your ass. There's no one, there's no one <laughs> no, else. It's yeah. thrifty. It's better yeah. than like doing reams of it for yeah. one little wipe. So I'll get like a, like a couple, like fold it over, wipe, and then do the fold. And fold, fold again. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Round two. You never go round three unless you're running Because also they talk about like phraseology of it. It's mm. like reusing toilet paper as a, as a statement sounds yeah. wild. That's not, like, that's not what you're doing. You're just using it sensibly. I think that's, yeah, I've always been told that's what you meant to wipe your ass. You don't say you're rebiting a sandwich. That's just what eating is. It's yeah. very good. If you're wiping your ass. It's just, yeah, what it is. We're saying fair play? Yeah. Fair yeah, play. Fair okay. play. Good. Thrifty. Fair Which play. I, bloody I think it's normal. <laughs> uh, fondling my dog's poo in the poo bag to keep my Sorry. hands warm in the cold. <laughs> minging or fair play. That's minging. <laughs> That's fucking nonsense. <laughs> if he's doing that. <laughs> So, <laughs> so like, sorry. and so when you don't pick up a lot of dog poo, so you know you. That's I fine. mean, you don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it's fucking boiling hot. Yeah. You guys get a bit like it's well, normal. It's normal. Also, yeah. as a dog owner, you get to that bit where sometimes <laughs> I, I don't know if you've ever done this. You picked up a dog poo, you go, "Oh, you haven't done that." Yeah, that's and cold. It's like a cold, it's cold one. Yeah. It's like some of the dog owner hasn't picked it up, and it's yeah. near your dog. Wait, poo. so what is this person doing? Keeping so, his hands so warm. So this is what like, I'm saying to you. Is like, so when you pick up dog poop, it's, it's incredibly yeah, warm. Yeah, yeah. So like, so, <gasps> sometimes I was like, surprises me how warm it is. Like this morning, it just pack, especially on a day like today. Oh, 100%, yeah, yeah. snow today. So I picked it up, put it in the thing. But like, you, there's a there's a, a warmth coming from it. And what this person is doing is holding it in their hands and fondling the poop. Won't. No, I, I just, that's I fucking minging. What are you just, talking about? Just not it's horrible. Is there? How hot is poo? It's I've, pretty warm. I've never man. shit in my own hands before. It's, it's pretty I don't know warm. How warm. It's, it's body it... temperature. Yeah, it's pretty warm. But you're making it sound like it's beyond body temperature. You're no, like, oh, oh, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. Yeah, if yeah. you have cold hands, it'll feel yeah, warm. It'll feel oh, warm. Yeah, it'll feel warm. Like it's a pr- it's sometimes it's surprisingly warm. It's warm. It's warm. All right. No, this is gross. It's absolutely. It's absolutely mean. It's absolutely mean, and it's also like disgusting. Do you reckon they're like? No, no, don't! Really Crew for, no, no, no. Uh, it's first, so we're saying minging for that, definitely minging. Yeah, I don't think there's okay. a, much of a debate. Uh, so, 
I hate brushing my teeth. <laughs> I mean, Megan, move on. Good but you've, got, you've, got, you've got to do it though. <laughs> my sister is a dentist. Uh, so she has pressed on me the fact that it's vitally important to brush your teeth many times. I don't think you need to be a dentist to like, give that advice to you. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't need to vet how you stop fucking fondling your dog's shit. <laughs> um, so even though I hate it, I commit to my teeth being clean every night and every morning. Good. However, sometimes when I've been drinking, I'll get home late and want to take the shortest route to bed. When this happens, instead of doing the smart thing and grabbing my toothbrush, I'll squirt a bit of toothpaste in my mouth, add water, gargle around until my teeth the clean. It's not just easy to just clean your <laughs> yeah. teeth. Before spitting it out in the sink. Recently, I brought this up to a couple of friends and he looked at me like I was kind of a psycho. What do you guys think? Ming or Fair Play? Well, has. One, I think that's doing fuck all. It's nothing. Yeah, it's you nothing might as well do mouthwash yeah. then. Yeah. And like you goggle out. Because like do mouth- minty mouthwash. water is like... The point of brushing your teeth is scrubbing yeah. the surfaces. Also, if you're doing it right, yeah. you don't have to taste a lot of the toothpaste if you're brushing your teeth. Like, I feel like I... I'm not, if I think like eating a bit of toothpaste, which I've done now and again, is a very different thing to just brushing your teeth. Like you sort of get the aura of mint in your thing, but you're not like, yeah. oh, I'm tasting I'm loads like, of mint. Wait, you eat toothpaste? No, I'm saying like, it doesn't, that that's what problem? I mean. Like, that's what I mean. I'm not eating toothpaste. Oh. So I don't think I like, think, I'm tasting loads of mint really. I think when you're right. just doing, just like, doing a, just even the most cursory scrub. Mm. If you don't want to say it's better than whatever that is. He, he should get these things I've seen in vending machines at airports which is like a toothbrush brush bowl, and you put it in your mouth, and you're just like, oh, I have seen these, but I've never used it. Is that what that is? Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. I yeah. think it just kind of brushes your teeth, but then you just spit it out into a bin or whatever. It's like a chewable it's, thing. I've never, yeah, I've seen them, but I've never seen them. That's someone like, yeah. at a meeting going, let's rethink the toothbrush. Yeah, yeah. It's this Nothing, guy. Everything is possible. I love brushing Everything's my brilliant. teeth. I've, I, I've gotten really big into it recently. I think we've got to break this well, down. Well, I was always into it, but yeah. I've gotten yeah. like... Have you got, have you got I, a toothbrush? As you get older, I think dental hygiene is so when you get a bit into yeah. it. Yeah. Brother, you want, you want me to tell you the game changer? Because mm. the big debate... Birds! <laughs> the, the big War debate pick. is a regular toothbrush or electric toothbrush. Mm. I do them both. I do first wow. pass with a regular, and then yeah. I take on the electric to oh, do the, okay. the last. At the same time. And, well, I don't know about that. I've got one I'm of those electric ones much. that gives you like the little pulse when like it yeah, basically the, just splits, splits, splits your mouth yeah, up yeah. into sections yeah. inside, oh, outside, yeah. Yeah. up and down. This this year, you know what I like treating myself to because I was like, I could see myself. A living dental hygienist. Yeah, he comes in. He's all right. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> he met him. He lives in downstairs toilet. I went in one time. He was going for a, he was really going for a plant scrub. I was like, I'm just having a shit, Gary. We didn't leave. He's always yeah, fond- I'm he's I'm always, he's always fondling my dog's shit. Um, <laughs> good guy, good guy. Um, no, I went, I bought a, uh, like I had an electric toothbrush and I was like, oh wow, my teeth feel healthier than they've ever felt. Um, and I could see myself getting a little bit older, like you look at yourself and you're like, oh shit. I don't want to worry about my teeth. I'm, I'm That's old. where I'm at. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to worry I'm, about my teeth. Same with my skin as well. My friend Annie um, recommended me this thing and it's essentially, it's called Foreo. Uh, I, it's, 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 it's quite an elaborate purchase, don't get me wrong, but I generally think my skin this year has been the best it's ever been. Um, because, and what it is essentially is like a, a, a motorized little scrub thing. Shut up. So you put it on and then cl- you, you scrub that part of your thing, gives you a little pulse and you're like, okay, done with the forehead now, mate. Now this part of your face, uh, this You bought a quarter. Roomba for your head? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Just um, a little Roomba. Well, it's basically like an electric toothbrush for your, for your face. Is it supposed um, to exfoliate? Is that the idea? That's all that, mate. Well, all the things, like the actual thing of it is exfoliating. So you put like your uh, face wash stuff off, you do your head, then it goes, and then it goes to your side of face, goes to the other side of your face, then you go to the bottom, two minutes, that's all it takes. Wow. I use it in the shower every day. I use it before I go to bed. All right, I might actually have to get the Dude, name of it's that. Dude, it's fucking brilliant. Like, People it's are really big into those uh, rollers now. Have you seen? They've got a crazy name, the Gua something. But it's like these like rollers made of things that you like press, massage your face in like certain Jane ways. Ooh. Yeah, it's supposed to like, yeah, make, I could make get your into skin that. glow. Yeah. I could get into that. Yeah, I love a little novelty product, but that sounds good. It, that and sounds and honestly, though, it's quite spenny, but mm-hmm. like it was one of those things where I saved up and I was like, I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna make my face look nice. And I, I generally, I feel like, I thought, I was always under the impression that as an, uh, once you got to 30, you stop getting spots of any kind. That does not no. happen, that does not happen. Yeah. And I feel like this is the, this is the, like I still get spots now, but like this is the, definitely the best my skin has ever been, I think. And it's really hard to say that without having people staring at your face right now. I, I like, just said your yeah. face was good earlier Thanks, as well. Yeah. So, Foreo, you go. Well, and, thanks and, to Foreo, baby. And summarize, brush your teeth. 
Brush your teeth. Yeah. Brush your teeth. Yeah, that was do. definitely minging. That was definitely minging. Um, there's another one that says, I like to dip tato cheese and onion crisps, uh, which is an Irish oh, delicacy, brand, yeah, tatoes, yeah. Yeah. Um, into oh. ice cream, minging or fair play. Don't I knock mean, it till you try it. I'm not bad. Oh, like, people like that, like, like it's like the chip, the McDonald's oh, chip yeah. and the milkshake. It's yeah. a bit sweet and savory. Bit sweet like, and savory, yeah. Let's, let's embrace it. Let's embrace it. Yeah. I think it's fair play. I think it, yeah. they've obviously discovered something here that we don't know I, about. Honestly, so. I think 10 years ago, people used to be like really down on shit like that. Whereas yeah. now, I think we live in a much more accepting. What did they say? Yeah. Sorry, a tato chip into ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Uh, we live in a salty caramel era. Is it? I mean, this is a wild one. I, I feel like we're, I'm, I'm going to know the answer to this one. Chai tea, minging or fair play? Absolutely fair play. Yeah. Why would they be minging? Is minging calling it chai tea? Just call it chai. Chai. Because chai. Chai, chai means tea. tea. Yeah. Oh. I say naan bread. Yeah. I didn't know that, to be mm. fair. So, yeah. There's a chai That's place. That's what naan, naan means <laughs> bread? <laughs> I don't know that either. Did you say pin number? Yeah. Oh, you like, yeah. You're there's, wasting all this time, mate. Oh, my God. There's, um... <laughs> Uh, there's a chai guy. Chai guy. I was just say pipe beer. That, yeah. Should I be pipe beer? That? Yeah. Can I get a pipe beer? Yeah, you can do that because you have pipe cider. Um, That's there's, true, a, yeah. there's a chai guy in Victoria Park every Sunday where I take Coco for a walk. Oh, the chai guys. The chai guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I watch them on YouTube. And if you uh, if you take your own mug, you get 15 pence off. Oh. Um, but the first I didn't the first time I did this I didn't even know I was just drinking a cup of tea and then I was like oh I'm gonna go to this little marketplace and went oh can I get some chai please get that one uh, and he was like oh I was like oh just put it in this mug is that right. As if I just had that idea and I was the only person in the world to have it. And he said, yeah, yeah, you get 15%, you get 15 um, pence hey. off. And I was like, oh, that's amazing, man. I went back the next week and I was like, oh, can I still get the 15 pence off? And uh, he was like, sorry, I'm just gonna have to check. <laughs> what? I was like, that's we, the incentive, right? We had this conversation last week, do you remember? And he turned to like his boss and his boss just went, Give him the like, well, not. <laughs> I was like, was he just doing it as a joke last um, time? Or he needed to check the front of his lord approves. Yeah, if you want the chai, so just get fifteen p. Yeah, and just like, keep going. Just show it, show him the mug. Fifteen pence. Put it in. Put it in <laughs> Go around every store. Yeah. I'm, a mate, I'm, a, I'm a cajillionaire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Chai. Fair play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, what, why would chai not be fair? Thing? Just yeah, like I the taste, know. I guess. Um, it's a weird one. When you've taken a big shit and the wiping never seems to end and it's starting to get sore. This sounds like, a, like an Irish ditty. <laughs> <laughs> or it's just like, when you take a shit and your wiping never seems to end, <laughs> a pint of plane is your only man. Um, that's a moray. Giving up and thinking that's good enough, Mingin or Fibler. Mingin. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I will say to this person Your is... ass is not clean. What I will Your say to this person is... Your job is not done. I would... I assume... You need sorry, toilet paper. Um, or uh, what I think is you might be able to find those like wet wipes that are good for the environment. So kind the of, ones that are kind of... Yeah. Or maybe doing a little bit of work. But also what I will also say is I'm making assumptions about you based on past experiences. Do you have quite a hairy ass? And if you do, <laughs> it might be time to start waxing the hair and everything because or if, diet you, if, you, well. if you have no hair there, dye the hair. Honestly, <laughs> if you have no if you have no hair on your ass, like you use one or two sheets and it's fucking done, man. Like that's one of the good things about. You waxing need that dolphin ass. ass. Dolphin ass, man. About. If you got dolphin ass, hairless. you're fucking done. Like it's you, like waxing a car down there. Absolutely, yeah. One white. That's car. what I would say. But I will say. I was with dolphins use no, nothing. Exactly nothing. But what I will say is, if you're if you're getting to a, a point. And it's starting to get sore. That is minging, and you need as your body. To, you, we need to you, change some you, things. If your body's ever getting sore, as your body say, stop it. Less of this. Pack it in. Less of this, please. You're yeah. right, though. Like I feel like some people buy like the cheapest toilet paper, yeah. and it's it's not worth it. No, it's counterproductive, isn't it? Like yeah. if this person is like, but, it hurts but, me. But, but it also feels like he's. Vera. But it also feels like he's yeah. doing it excessively, though. Yeah, I, no, think, I think he does. Like, like, he sounds like he's going for some time. I think he's got hairy ass. Also, could be diet. Like if you're eating something that's like requiring that much. No, but like even if you've had like a normal shit though, and it's hanging around on the thing. But is this like, like is every time he has a shit? I think he's got hairy ass. Oh. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. they're leaning into the heavy ass. I the think he's got ass hairy ass. ass. Um, shave your ass, I guess. Then. That's kind don't of. Don't shave your ass. I'm not. That's not what I said at all. I said get Wax. your get your Sorry. inside your ass waxed. Sorry. Is there a huge difference between those two things? Well, yeah, how it's done. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, I guess primarily, <laughs> but yeah. Also, I would never... Yeah, I think there's a very you different you're getting a razor and that's shaving that... That's quite a scary experience, I reckon. I'm never doing it myself. That's insane. I don't think I would ask someone to do that either. No, I, I'd do that. Well, ask someone to... Well, I do get that done. No, I mean shaving. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not shaving. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. 
Hey, Coco. Oh. No, I think. Come here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. What are you doing? What are you doing? There you go. They stopped not being here. Let me. Coco. It's for you. Coco. That's enough now. In the festive spirit, last Christmas Day morning, I was working in A and E in a Northern Irish city that won't be named. Corey, maybe. Do you to... Oh no, city. Belfast? Mate, he's not naming it for a reason. We, right? had, <laughs> we had a gentleman arrive early in the morning with a carrot lodge somewhere that it shouldn't have been. We couldn't get it out by hand, and so he needed to go to theatre. Poor shirt. It was poor shirt. Uh, yeah. He absconded after finding this out, presumably to help the kids unwrap their presents, but then came back in the afternoon for the surgery after he started to bleed. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. What? He'd so, come in the morning. He had a, yeah, he carried so, up his he had ass. Carried up his ass, and I su- like what these people think is that I think he thought it was. Wait, I think he thought it was an easy way to get rid of it. Um, but they went in and realized they couldn't get it out with their hands, and so they had to take him into the theater. But he said, "Okay, I have to go." And they're saying presumably to help the kids open their presents. And then he came back later in the afternoon because his ass started to bleed. It's not very Christmassy. So, it says, it? so using like, uh, using not massively Christmassy that is it. But it says so using things that aren't sex toys as sex toys, mingle no fair play. Well, in the usual uh, context, it would be fine, ooh, but you've got to do slight, research. Yeah. Slightly risky in this instance. Well, the thing about a carrot is... Because what you're doing, like... It's yeah. all fun and games until then the carrot goes all the way in. It's and all, and then it's all fun and games until you've got a carrot stuck up your ass on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you could put... You could have, be in that same predicament with a sex toy, I think. Yeah. I think you've always just got a little bit excited on Christmas Day. Um, yeah. Well, a lot of them are designed got built to, in bases. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They're, they're designed to I, not but You've got carrots built in extraction. Uh, <laughs> I think. That's how they get pulled out. Yeah, in Bugs Bunny cartoons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, no, always buy organic. Is yeah, what I'm yeah. Always, you know. I, th- I think it, I, I would say it's fair play to use whatever you want as long as it's safe, but maybe use a, an actual sex toy that's made for that thing. And also, like, if it's Christmas Day, play it safe. Play it safe. Because it's like, you know, it's like, you know. Do a boxing day. Well, that obviously had to be some sort of snowman-related sex incident, surely. Okay. Oh, <laughs> he was, like, going, <laughs> <laughs> put his ass on his nose. Sitting on the, the snowman's face or obviously, something. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, yeah. guys, Snowman's on. loving it. <laughs> the snowman, in the front guard, he's like, what happened to him? Yeah. <laughs> he's melting. He's, he's melting. Great right. cheek prints on his face. That was a cool scratch. He's like, you're like, he's kind of smiling. He melted a bit quick, didn't it? <laughs> um, we're going fair play on that. We're going fair play on that. Where's that? <laughs> so I was just smoking. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, we're going fair play on that. Uh, yeah, fair play. This is a really interesting one because I had to look up what it was. Um, using four-year-old lemon sherbet to make sweet cones for school Christmas fair. Sweet cones are just plastic cone bags filled with a variety of sweets. Um, I've been dipping into this... Uh, this three kilograms of sherbet for the past few years. I thought I was never going to eat it all, so I used the rest of it to make sweet cones. I don't remember if I did the old lick the finger and take a dip, but I can't rule it out as a possibility. I normally pour the sherbet in my sherbet pot and eat it using a teaspoon. I don't think (laughs) sherbet goes out of date, but to be honest, by the time you read this, the cones would have been sold out, so maybe you can ease my conscience. Minging or fair play. This is the most I've heard about sherbet. I know. The way this person thinks, like, I actually don't think they should be making things for kids. I think they feel like we're all, (laughs) we all know more about sherbet. This is like a letter from the Dickens times. Do you you guys know what sweet cones are? No. I think I I kind, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So it's like these little sort of bags. That's kind of what I imagine. I didn't know that's what they're called, but that's what I imagine. So it's basically like a long, Basically, the dilemma is more. They've put these together for kids, yeah. but they've had a reserve of sherbet that they've for been some like, that, and they might have been like putting their finger in it, and yeah. is that minging? I mean, should should anyone have three kilograms of sherbet? That's the thing. I think anyone who does have three kilograms of sherbet and doesn't know it, whether or not they put their finger in it really shouldn't be making things for children. Yeah. Like if I if I had kids, I like really strategy. I know. really would be thinking about like what are my kids eat did. Why is this man brought a sugar cone? Yeah. Is sherbet not sweet cones? The the powder as well. The sugar. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a sugar powder. So is this person making sweets or are they just pouring sugar? I don't know. Into are they meant cone? to be there? So yeah. So I think they're meant to be there. But I think what they're doing is so these sweet cones. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're filling that with sweet. Oh, the yeah. sweets as well. So the they're sherbet making, inside yeah. it, and then the sweets inside it as well. Oh. So the kids are also all the sweets are going to be quite sugar because they've had this for three years and they might have been dipping a finger in. Yeah. I feel like maybe yeah, this it is. is. I think it's I think it's 
I mean, it's one thing if you want to eat it, maybe it's not minging, but no, if you're sitting yeah. with other people, yeah, that's what I find. I just find it all. This one's got three kilograms worth of sherbet. sherbet just hanging about. Yeah. Oh, we've got to get through that. But the only person who had that, that was the witch who killed Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, and the child catcher. <laughs> and the child catcher. Yeah, that's a strange yeah. thing. Yeah, do you want to be known as the witch from Hansel and Gretel or the child catcher? I, I think no. So I would think maybe. Mingo. Now, we're saying like maybe. a we're beekeeper or something. Maybe they have a lot of What's sugar. That <laughs> they love sugar. Or, or, if you want more bees. Sweet show. I don't think you can just yeah. give them sherbet. <laughs> No, if you want to attract more bees. That's how you get from the you get, more, you get more bees with sherbet. That's what they say, isn't it? That's the old saying. That's what yeah. they say, yeah. You catch more bees with sherbet than you do with guns or something. Um, okay, yeah, here's one. Uh, minging or fair play, paying for someone's only fans that you know in real life. I think it's fair play. I think it's fair play as long as it's not done then, in a weird way. As long as you like, don't have a weird relationship. Yeah, with them. I think that market is so saturated that that person would just take the money anyway. Also, like, this is also a nice thing. You're like supporting your friend. Yeah. You're like, you're not actually like we indulging have, in it. We know people and have friends who like Absolutely. have OnlyFans, and it's like, yeah, you want to like support that. Absolutely, I, I think like if you people in that will be like, oh, you do something. You're, you're, not do, weird you're, about you're doing it. something weird and seeing yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah. So you're same not with weird. the show, Yeah, like, yeah. As long as you're not making it weird. I think that you, would be me. If yeah. you're having to figure out whether it's weird or not, you are weird. Maybe you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. you're not doing it for a nice reason, though. Are you like, yeah, yeah, because then also maybe it's not a support thing. Maybe it's an attractive thing, and then mm. it's like uh, that could make things complicated. So if you, yeah, to be fair, maybe writing into this, they are weird, so maybe they shouldn't do it. So maybe it's me. But I, I, I don't think it's everyone. Trust right. the compass of your own heart. Which, which, I don't think which this is only can. fans is strap line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, trust, trust the fans. compass of your pants. I feel like someone who's writing in anonymously to uh, another thing is like can't can't trust the compass of maybe their don't. own maybe, soul. Maybe don't. Uh, so I'll say fair play for the people sitting around this table, fair. minging for you, fella. Uh, <laughs> um, so a guy I work with brings in lunch each day. Uh, the lunch in question is toast sandwiches. Not a toasty, just a regular ass sandwich. Cheese and marmite usually, but with toast instead of bread. Cold, dry toast. Nothing melted, nothing else special, just two slices of dry white toast, a cold slab of meat and some marmite, or sometimes pickle. Normally I couldn't give less of a hoot while someone else is eating, each their own, but this just feels like a st step too far. I don't want any cop-out answers, like you can eat what he likes. Uh, if I made you toast sandwiches, oh, this, if I made you toast sandwiches for your work lunch each day, would you think, yeah, this is this lunch is fair play, or actually, this lunch is a bit minging, thanks in advance. I think this person has been like, they're making out that toast sandwiches are weird. Yeah. Let me phrase it in a different way. Toasted bread sandwich, mm. which is what a club sandwich is. Yeah. I would yeah, say yeah. their sandwich sounds like a sad, bad sandwich. <laughs> but having like toasted bread. That's what bread, you're into, yeah. Having toasted bread in a sandwich yeah. isn't inherently weird if it's not no. toasty. A club sandwich is toasted bread. Yeah. And it's not a toasted sandwich, yeah. yeah. That's the thing, it's like... It just sounds like the filling is bad here. Yeah, yeah. I don't but think like, the concept of having toast as the bread component is necessarily bad. But also, that, that's the thing, cheese and he's making a cheese and pickle sandwich. Yeah. Like, I think that's, I think that's absolutely so fine. The way it was worded, I thought she was saying he was having a toast sandwich. Yeah. So well, that's why it sounds a piece like of toast in between <laughs> two slices toast. of bread. I think they're coming from me. It's like that, that is inherently weird. Yeah. yeah well, the yeah. toast. But some people weird, have but... like sandwiches with toasted bread because yeah. it adds a crunch and like a textural Absolutely. element to a sandwich. Why is that? A, that's not weird, is it? I think it's or not unusual. something. That, it's not something I mean, I've ever pat myself. It doesn't sound like the best sandwich they've yeah. made. But... That is literally how you improve any sandwich is toasting it. But I literally think like they're saying because it's cold. It, they, yeah, is that like a difference? What's cold? The whole thing. The whole thing. Like yeah. a club sandwich, like it's not necessarily served hot. No. So, so the, bread, this person is like toast oh, right. when it's not hot. So this person the is, is still toast. It's oh. toasting the bread. Right. Then it's taking it out, and then he's making the sandwich, which is just cheese and pickle. Got and then it. He's put it in the fridge. Put it in all his toast. backpack. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. The bread all still toast. has a yeah. crunch to it. Yeah. yeah. But it's not necessarily just fresh toast. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. That sounds like a good sandwich. I think I'll be fine. I'm fine I think, I think the way you're saying it is fine. It's like yeah. on a on a. I think they're approaching like is weirder than it. I, I don't yeah. think it sounds like the best sandwich in the world. Well, I'll tell you what. Someone who's complaining about this has never worked with a coworker who microwaves fish for lunch. Once you understand how bad things can be, a you'll, toasted you'll sandwich yeah, is yeah. going to seem like nothing at all. I think they're trying to have yeah. a little toasted bread sandwich that's not like cheese involved. Yeah, it's very good. 
I'm down. Thing is though, I, I have cheese on my, if I ever have a Subway, I have cheese on that and I never have a Subway toasted, ever. Mm. Like, so I've just got the cold, yeah. like, nice cold cheese on it. I'm you like, can do that? I thought they have to toast it. No, yeah, man. Yeah. You can have whatever you want. Oh. That's whatever you want. Yeah. You make the sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Bro, That's when, the Subway, line. <laughs> when Subway first started, they didn't even toast shit. Like, that's how old I am. I can remember when they didn't have toasters. That's crazy. We made like, them enough money so they could buy yeah. toasters. I love that meme where it's like someone saying, oh, I don't really like Subway. And the response is like, my dude, you make the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's your choice. You can cook if you want. Yeah, you can have a fucking bag of Doritos and anything you want. What do you it's mean you don't hot. like it? I know, I've seen that. I like that a lot. I'm saying fair play. We'll say fair play on that. Yeah. Um, staying up all night instead of sleeping two hours so you don't have to struggle with waking up. 100% fair play. I've done that multiple times. <laughs> not surprising. Yeah. So you would. Uh, both are yeah. Bad. So you basically, rather than go, I don't want to have to deal with it getting up after you two do hours the next sleep. day, right? Yeah. I think it depends what you do. In the, you're driving a family of two. Like, yeah. I think like that. four I hours sleep. is my cutoff. If there is a chance where I can get four hours of sleep, right, and that's all I can get, yeah. I would rather stay up through the four hours okay. until the next night. It's a question I'm trying to avoid. Because I find it super hard to, like once I'm in sleepy mode and I wake up, I'm not a napper. I don't yeah. nap, so like I, I don't experience the world of micro sleep. Yeah. So I find it micro really hard to, sh to shake it off. <laughs> so I'm with this person. I'd rather just stay stay up. I think if it was hours. two hours, I would. Like, I think it was yeah. four, I'm going to bed. I think it's like, oh, okay. <clears throat> I think about the times where we actually have to face this in a real world situation. Like if we were in the airport, I'd yeah. just stay up. I yeah, would, I would stay up because it's like I'm more likely going to not get up if I go for two hours. <laughs> Let's say hypothetically, uh, you have to get up in the morning to film the crew too, yeah. um, and it is four a.m. <laughs> and we just got a big McDonald's, and you just yeah. got lots of McDonald's, and you're in the studio. Probably do you, do get two you hours yeah. sleep. Yeah, well, to be fair, we got three hours sleep. I think that night. So. I, I think staying up all night. I think that's with two hours. I think is fine. If it was four hours, I'd be rather think, I'd be four think, hours. I'd rather I can go to sleep for four hours. That's fine. Okay, four hours is going to be good. Two I hours, think I think, so. it's going to maybe fuck you up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's safe. Um, so two hours, totally fine. Two hours, fine. For anything more than two hours, minion, minion. Um, when playing games with friends, it's common to use a set of guest controllers. But by the end of play sessions, I think about how many chip grease and food-covered sweaty hands held them, and that they are really wiped down. So when I pick one up next time, I cringe at the thought of what I'm holding at the same time. Uh, a few minutes, I'm so lost in the fun, I couldn't care less. What do you boys think? Is this an accepted casualty of group game, or should I start bringing some wipes to the party and be that guy who will get called out for bringing wipes to games? If I went to someone's house and f to specifically play video games, and they had a dirty controller, I feel like I would be you fine. I'd be, I'd be fine being like, I'm going to wipe this down myself. <laughs> right, but yeah. They're saying like mid play, if they bring out wipes, are they going to be considered like. But before, the... before play. So they're picking oh, up. So he's, saying, so he's, he's, saying like, he's saying like mid play, like after a couple of minutes, you'll forget about it or whatever. Yeah. But... That, all you're then saying is like, you're allowed to clean your stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fine, right? I would love to see the state on this. Thing. I feel like to be fair, I've played video games socially before, and you can like you get a controller off someone, and you're like you could tell that Sticky. their hands were a bit sweaty or Ugh. something. It's not on them. You like you don't want to call it out, but you're like this is kind of gross. But if he's doing it in between like play sessions, yeah, that's just I mean, hygienic. Because yeah. like if you had a friend stay over, you clean you clean I, bedding yeah. and stuff. Like you just using a communal thing. Yeah, right? yeah. I also right. think in this post-COVID world as well, you can just go like oh, I don't know the way. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wipe this down. Oh, Dude, I think that's fine. If I was at a house and someone wiped it down before they gave it to me, I'd just be like, that was just a really courteous thing to do. Yeah, like, yeah really yeah. sweet. I wouldn't think it was weird at all. I, so it's a, it's the opposite of minion. Yeah. I think if I was getting play. if I was getting people specifically around my house, I would be like, oh, we're gonna be playing video games. I feel like I would just clean them anyway. Mm. I think that's absolutely fine. Yeah, it's nice. It's considerate. Yeah. Um naming your child after a fictional character. I'm a high school teacher, so I know uh, some twelve year old kids named Khaleesi are going to be sick of being called the Queen of Dragons and saying Dracarys near them in class. I don't think it's Ming. I don't think it's Ming. It's just maybe, you know what, could be misjudged. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, it's going to like, it's probably going to date quite badly. Especially some of those wilder names. Because Khaleesi's pretty. Me, yeah. for example, I'm named yeah, after like, a cowboy well, also, that yeah. my dad used to love. A, a it's a normal name. name. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, he didn't call me I don't Clint. Think he's it's not Clint Ming. Powers. Clint's cool. That would have been That's good, good actually. Yeah. It's not Mingin though, is it? I don't think it's Mingin. No, it's just it's a Mingin. bit like. Also, I feel like those, those. I feel like those people growing up yeah. as well are going to have a really different. Like a, a kid being born now. That's like, you like a TV show like. Like four years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so, it. I mean, it's like, like in twenty years, right. it's gonna not mean that at all. The relationship that those kids are gonna have with that name is gonna be completely different to the relationship that the parents were having with it. So I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. Like fair play. I'm saying fair play on it. Doesn't bother me. Go for um, it. Um Yesterday, I watched someone walking their dog in the field, and the dog took a big ass poop. They pulled out a poop bag, but instead of bagging it like a like usual, they grabbed the poop in their hand. Um, that they picked it up with and then they dropped it in the bag what? and then tied it up. You're joking me. I've never seen that before. I don't know if people do that normally, I mean, but it didn't look right. I mean, That's we don't have a conversation about this, do we? It's just minging, it? like, picking up dog shit with your yes. own hands. <laughs> you're, you're, like, when you have a poo bag, I mean, let's move on because there's minging, yeah, isn't it? It's a waste of our it's time. It's picking shit, it? dog shit with your own hand, minging. Yeah, yeah. yeah, any yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. any shit, any shit. I'd love to have seen that live. Who's uh, writing that? <laughs> well, they've seen it. I feel I believe that as well because the way it's yeah, written, I, but totally like, I do nice. believe it. Yeah, um, maybe they don't know though. It's like oh, I don't have a dog. This is what people are doing. Maybe it's like so shocking to see. I was like, I need to get a bearing on yeah. this. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, smell your own farts, being no fair play. That's fine. I right? think it's fair play because you have to. It's yours, right? I think it's yeah. Mingin. I think it's Sabs. I think it's I'm Sabs going Mingin. You go in Mingin. Yeah, I'm going Mingin with well, that. What else can you do? Not deliberately smell it. You have to though. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to. Like, you're gonna smell you your own fart. Police? I can't put my nose elsewhere, can I? Like, <laughs> yeah, but like, you're gonna smell your own fart. No, but the way you're saying it is yeah, like going it. out of your way, being like, "Oh, I just farted. Let me get a little." No, no, taste we're not doing that. that. We're not That's doing exactly that. That's exactly what this person is thinking. No, but like, you have to smell your own fart. Like, you fart. Well, you know, I've got to smell it now because it's coming out of my ass. Like, well, what are you gonna do? Run? <laughs> no, what I mean, <laughs> if I could not, th- this person is saying like getting like joy, going yeah. out of the way, smelling your own farts. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I can kind of see that. Yeah, I don't yeah. get any joy from it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. Just, oh yeah, big into that. Gotta smell yeah. your own farts. We do the weekend. Just smell your own farts for a bit. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I've got. Okay. It's obviously okay. Fine. Sorry. No. I mean, I meant like if you if you're caught in the crossfire. Yeah. That's fair play. The thing happens. That's the thing, though. You're though. always caught in the crossfire. You, yeah, that's what I mean. But if, you, if you're taking joy from it, it's minging. It. Yeah. Um, eating a spoon of Miss Swiss hot chocolate powder. I don't know what Miss Swiss is. I guess it's just like eating powder of hot chocolate. It's like eating jello cubes. It's like eating the thing before it's the thing it's meant to be. Is it nice though? No, it can't be. No, but like if they're eating it, it is. It probably is nice because it, yeah. it turns into That's the thing, thing like, that it, is nice. Does it it's taste like eating a bit of a stock yeah. cube? Yeah. It's just like the concentrated version. It's like eating a jelly cube. But it's, it's too just like con- much. I don't but, know what it tastes like. like. It's it's gonna be like eating a jelly. Eating hey, those like jelly cubes is fucking. I that think is that's what it is. Because yeah, yeah. it's it's the thing you like, but more concentrated. Injected into yeah. your veins. But the the sensation of powder in your mouth, I feel like I'd be like. Yeah. Well, that's about powder. I won't in your be mouth. into it. I yeah. won't. I won't be. I don't think it's it. minging there. What if it's a nice thing? You I think it's, I think it's incredibly indulgent. Is it going weird as it starts hitting? Like getting a little bit liquidated. I mean, if it's powder, like, yeah. that is like going at a rate because yeah. you think about the surface area of a powder, that is like mainlining it. Yeah, how does he eat it? Does he make it into a paste in his mouth? No, he said sort? eating a spoon. I think he's eating a, eating a spoon, spoon and injecting it right into his artery. Yeah. <laughs> how do you eat dust? <laughs> Wouldn't that lace your throat and kill you? Please write Store it. Please write it. It's like people doing the cinnamon <clears throat> challenge. It's like yeah. June. Yeah. It's like yeah. spice in June. <laughs> He's got like blue eyes because all this like hot chocolate powder he's been eating. Oh, one um, of the big questions in Dune. How do you? I don't. Eat I don't think. Dust? I think it's. I think it's fair play. But I also. It's I've, indulgent. I've never done it, yeah. so I've gone thirty-seven if years. If someone do it, I wouldn't go. Oh, that's minging. Yeah. Uh, that's no, minging. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Okay, I'll say fair play. I'll, I'll say fair, fair play. play. Let's do next hundred questions. We'll do that. Um, <laughs> Sharing a loofah with your partner, not in a sexy shower time way, just two people Functional. using uh, uh, both using a soapy cleaning implement when they need it. I've yeah. done it. Fine. Doesn't I, we do me. have our own, but I've also when we've gone away, I've just you, we've shared one. I don't have a loofah. Do you clean your loofahs? Uh, no, do I use it for like cleaned? I use it for maybe like six weeks and right. I get like a new, new one. one. Yeah. yeah. Just those little puffy yeah, things, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what you're referring that's to. That's what I think is like, yeah, yeah. Not like those, you know, the old sea loose tie loofers. Like from the sea. Yeah. No, not right. that. That's what I think you meant. Oh, like yeah. the coral, yeah, yeah. scrubby things, yeah. Because those that's things, mad, isn't it? Like, yeah, they're I lived with someone that used- a bit of the fucking coral reef to like clean your body. It's like, that's probably not helping the coral reef. Yeah. I, I lived <laughs> with someone once that had one and it was 
like he had it for like a year. It was honking. Yeah, Absolutely. that's why. Yeah, because they're yeah. real shit yeah. as well. They're like a bit of rock and dirt and gristle, and it's like yeah, I'm gonna rub. <laughs> I'm, out to, I'm talking about those like, little puffball yeah, things. I know what you're like, talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. a shower sponge thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think using that with your thing. It's I, fine. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there, also, there's no need to share. Just get two. Yeah. Yeah, get off. Unless they're massive. <laughs> Like those big loofers are massive. Um, yeah, are well, we've got we've got our own we've got our own ones. It's like a bit Pandora. You when we've, when, we've, <laughs> when we've been away and like I've forgotten to take one, then we're like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna share this one. It's fine. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, being so hungover that you get back on it to escape the hangover. Absolutely I mean, yeah, fine. fine. Fair play. Fine. Absolutely fair play. Yeah. Be doing that tomorrow. I'm doing that um, now. <laughs> <laughs> being able to bite the tops off beer bottles. Some oh. of my mates are impressed. Others not so much. Are you talking about like geeking the whole thing or just take take the actual tops? <laughs> like, arm, yeah, just like biting the, the glass. glass. I'm guessing he's like he's like I think he needs popped the cap. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. talk a lot about like dental care, like it is probably quite Don't do in, because like you're gonna I, I had two friends who growing up chip tooths opening Ooh, beer bottles. Ooh, no way. It's just not worth no it. Way. Just get a ball opener. It's, uh, it's so, so avoidable as a concept. Yeah, I will say Ming into this. I don't think it's disgusting, but I think it's irresponsible. Well, also, and that is I'm Ming in a sense. My friend, well, necessarily is Ming. When I was on holidays with my friend Andrew at a wedding uh, this this last summer, he can, he was like, I think I could open up a beer bottle with anything. Uh, and like, so he just show he'd like he'd be like, I'm a give me two forks, and he was like, yeah, I can open it with that, and he was yeah. like, anything you can get like a little bit of purchase and lift, yeah, yeah, like you can. Be, and he and I was like, he showed me how to do it with two lighters, um, but I don't have lighters on me all the time, and he was like, oh, your rings, let me let's see if we can do it with your rings, and like he opened one with one of my rings, I was like, dude, if you can teach me how to do it, I'm not quite there yet, but I can do it with two lighters, um, or two forks, but I couldn't do it. He, he was doing it with like one of my rings and uh, his thumb. Um, yeah, there's like, a real art to it. Yeah. That I had a friend, yeah, similar show me, who's like one of those people that can just open a bottle with anything. Mm. Like a plastic spoon, they'd find That's a way what I mean. to do That's it. What, that became like, like a holiday adventure where I was like, Andrew, what about this, man? It's pretty and cool. Like, I'd like yeah. to be able to do with something on my body. Yeah, like a bicep but you don't need or... anything else, do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, but yeah. I don't know. Ours. Not there yet. Yeah, butthole, straight in. But we're saying yeah. specifically with your teeth, I think it's quite making it. Yeah, because yeah, you, you're going to fuck them up Reckless. eventually. Yeah, like... this is for your own good, buddy. We yeah. have to say that was Mingo. Uh, letting your dog sleep on your bed with you, Mingo Fair Play. I'm going to let you guys answer that one because I don't really have a lot of experience. Honest. Honest one. I mean, it probably is me, depending on what they do, but I do it all the time. But so also, I like, say fit, I put like, a little blanket down for him. Yeah. And it's, like, it's not like I've got him on my pillow next to my face. I think the happiness that I get from yeah, it is I, worth it. I, I thought about this a lot before I had a dog. I was like, oh, but it's like, it's really nice. Yeah. And he's got his own little blankets down. And... What's really funny is when friends of yours uh, buy, get a dog, and I've only really had Coco, and Coco was trained when I got her and stuff, but like, but it's funny when people get new dogs. Like a friend of ours got a dog, and he was like, "Did not do this, not do that, not do that." And you're like, "Let's just see how long those rules go for." The next time you see him, you're like, "Dog's like eight months old or something." And you're like, "Oh yeah, how, how's it going?" He's like, "Yeah, he's allowed upstairs. He's allowed to so all the things." Like, yeah, oh yeah, he obviously sleeps downstairs. And it's like, really, uh, he, he sleeps upstairs now. He's upstairs. <laughs> That's like, what he wants. He's like, okay, but he sleeps upstairs, but he only sleeps like outside the room. Okay, he's sleeping in the room now. That's fine. And he's like, okay, but he only sleeps by the side of our bed. Okay, we sleep downstairs. He sleeps in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in the house. Yeah, he it's moves his, out. It's his house. Are you ready for the one hundredth question? Yes. And it is a Ming and Earl fair play. Woo! Um, and we've always we've started ending with the most Ming and one. I do think this is quite rough, but I'm not from this world, so I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Helping your partner with a clogged milk duct by trying to suck it out yourself. Yes, you do end up drinking some breast milk. But it's completely non-sexual. For context, milk buildup can be very painful, and the baby br- slash breast pump don't always get the job done and remove the clog. I think so. The milk gets built up and clogged. I don't find it good. I think it's helpful. There must be a better way. <laughs> it sounds like this guy's like, oh, it's a fucking. It's just. Hey, sometimes it doesn't do it. I'm get, I'm getting in there. I'm getting in there. I can't think of anything worse. Then you can't think of anything worse I than with Clara than sucking milk out of her tits. <laughs> <laughs> no. I would, I, I would really rather avoid that. Thanks okay. for joining us for another yeah. year uh, long episode. I, can't, I, I, I think <laughs> also like is that uh, no? I don't. I don't. I'm, no. I. I'm, I don't, I I don't want to do that. This is probably a better way. Yeah. Better. There's an appliance or yeah. must technique. Be. There must be. I can't believe. Yeah, I can't believe that's the. That's not what we're saying. though. No. This is what we're saying. What this guy's saying. 
I'm saying Mingin. We got fair play. I think I would. You I, would do it. I, I would. I, I like. You I'm, would suck milk out of your girlfriend's tits. <laughs> I don't think, I think I'd like to... You go, this is what he's doing. I'd like to at some point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's phrasing, would you help your girlfriend with a medical problem? No, but that's not what it is though. That's not what it is. You would, say, you, would, you would suck your girlfriend's milk out of her tits. I'm not doing this on camera. Like, <laughs> this is like, that's what he's me. doing. I know, I heard. <laughs> you know what? If she wanted me to, I would. So fair play, fair play. I'm saying Mingin for that. If that's, she that's said, easy, easy help me, me, my milky volcano, Needs to erupt. I would say, so please. I would so say weird. yes, so sweetheart. Phrased. Anything for you. To be fair, no. I, that's, 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 I don't think I necessarily want to do it. Doesn't matter. That's not. That's not what the question is. The question is: it? Is it making or fair play? Fair play. I, I'm happy to be outvoted on that, lads. Good luck with it. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have taken a drink right when I said that. The <laughs> 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 Guinness uh, volcano. Uh, just. Uh, <laughs> oh. What a year! What another year! Ending with a, I, so what, I, what, what I thought. What I thought was an easy minging, but apparently I'm in. I'm wrong. So yeah, I need fine. to. I'm changing my mind. Quite a lot. No, 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 no. You, 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 you said it. Now you said it. Now I'll stand by it. I'll stand by it. But thank you very much for joining us for another hundred questions. Uh, we'll see you next year. Uh, stop sending in minging or fair plays for a little bit. Have a little break. Have a little break. Is what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, happy new year. We hope you enjoyed that as much as we enjoyed making it. There's more than 200 episodes of the Shield Up podcast available to patrons right now. So if you'd like to support us and help us to continue to make the things that we love, head to patreon.com forward slash 